Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Okay, uh, let's continue with space exploration. Um, we just got Arcospheres, uh, the basics for swapping them from one type to another, uh, sorted out. Or at least our first iteration of it. I had an idea to improve this, uh, last night, but I don't actually remember what it was. <laughs> so, maybe it'll come back to me. Um... Yeah, I honestly don't know at this point. Um, alright, what else do we have going on right now? Steel scaffolding spiders. Cleaning up the old base. We've still got some room in at least one of these spiders. Let's see if we can't pick this stuff up. Um, that's actually empty see how that goes. And uh, what's going on with our Naquitite? We're pretty much saturated. As far as I can tell, we're saturated with ships. Um, we've actually got several queuing to land at Nalvis now. The reason they're not landing is this one isn't leaving. The reason this one isn't leaving is because we're not consuming the Naquitite that quickly. Um, but the reason we're not doing that is we're not making Vitalic Acid fast enough. And the reason we're not making Vitalic Acid fast enough is we're not making Vitamelange Extract fast enough. Um, and surprisingly enough, even that doesn't trace back to some kind of throughput issue. Well, as some kind of throughput issue in this block is what I was going to say. Um, obviously, it comes back to some sort of throughput issue. Linarian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, I think I made the same mistake here. Um, we can end up with 7.2 trainloads of extract in here, but I had a train limit of 1. Um, and I'm seeing... I updated all of these ones, but I'm seeing the same issue um, with our Vidimlange Roast pickup station. Because we've got completely full chests of nuggets here. Yeah, I didn't mean to say roast, I meant nuggets. Nuggets go back to the Omni Smelters to make roast. Um... And basically, we've been making it faster than the trains will pick it up, just because we we're only scheduling one train at a time uh, to pick it up. So we might not actually have to improve our... Um, we might not actually need to improve our Vitamelange, like the amount we're mining in the first place. Um, although I think I did see some of these stations are lacking Vitamelange itself. So maybe we'll probably get a burst of um, more Vitamelange extract in a little while. Since we're going to be consuming this, uh, consuming these nuggets that have piled up. Um... But I think we do still need to increase our Vitamelange throughput. We were looking at another outpost for Vitamelange. We could also go to... Um, which planet was it? Not Rose. Not Ariel. Um, Tenium. Uh, we've got quite a bit of throughput that... Uh, we've got quite a bottleneck here with um, just the time it takes for the delivery cannons to charge up. 
so if we were to replace this with a spaceship uh, pickup, it's actually kind of a perfect fit. Um, I'll obviously need to stop all of this for a moment to get this done, but how many bots do we have? Enough. Yeah, I'll have to stop all of this um, for a minute to get this done. But I think we could just put a pickup station right here. We will, of course, have to add the same kind of robo network and logic and stuff. What's this? I thought I saw flashing there, but it seems to be fine. Um, we'll have to add the same kind of calculating what's in the ships and so on, but that's pretty straightforward at this point. Also, the construction ship is still here. I kind of forgot. Um... How's our power? Oh yeah, well, I should leave that here until we've got... Oh, 7,000 degrees. Cool. This thing can power itself now. Calculated. That's what I meant to do. Um, I could set up something to mine this ice. So that we super don't have to worry about running out of water here. I'll have to expand out... Um, I'd have to expand out the robot network and the point defenses and so on. I don't see the need, to be honest. don't really feel like doing that. Um, is there anywhere else I want to send the construction ship other than straight home right now? Probably to Electra. I think this was where we saw our next... Uh, our best Vitamalunge candidate. Radius 4.2k, very close to Nalvis orbit. Um, it's only going to take a ship or two to keep up with that. And we'll autoclave the biters for starters. There's also a few other planets. Um, in this system that might be good, definitely would be good in future to get. So I think we'll do that. We'll go to Electra and don't actually have that much scaffolding left. Um, I could make a start though to set everything up there. And then swing back to Nalvis Orbit. Cool. And then... Do we have another ship here? No. I honestly think I overshot with how many... Um, how many ships we need to send to Stardust. I kind of want to borrow one of the exist, uh, existing ones. Hmm, let's see. We just need this to be empty. Uh, we need nine chests. Uh, requested chests. It's kind of a lot. But I could just mark those for... Oh my goodness! Um, I didn't think of this. Yeah, this is a problem I never expected to have. We've got our storage chests full of Nacrotite here. Um, how did that happen, actually? Because... We've just got 
buffer chests with set requests. So it's not as if the bots should take from the buffer chests and put them into storage. How did we get here? Um, how many chests do we have handy? We've got buffers and passive providers. Oh, we've got this spider here as well. So... I really don't understand why the bots put Naquitite into the storage chests here. If setting requests on a buffer chest to nothing means the bots will empty it, I don't think they do, but a uh, big if true. Let's add a few chests here and see what happens. Um, which spider is this? This one, perhaps? There we go. Okay, so we've got some more storage chests with no filter. It's connected to the circuit wire as well, so that won't cause any problems. The bots are not moving the Naquitite. I don't understand what drove them to put Naquitite into storage. Uh, actually, I think I do. Because we have to deal with using logistic bots for the ships uh, to load and unload, we have to deal with bots accidentally getting kidnapped um, when the ships take off. Uh, conversely, we could have... No, I I'm trying to envision how a bot could have come to pick up Naquitite and then went to put it somewhere, and then the ship takes off, and then it's got no choice but to bring it to the storage chest. But I don't see how that would happen, actually. Curious. Um... I was waiting, I, I wanted to get this Naquitite out of this ship so that we could take this ship and send it at a new destination, uh, since at least for now we've very much got too many ships pointed at um, Stardust. But this is a bit awkward to say the least. Well, how much Naquitite do we have here? Let's say that it's 20 chests full, and then another 11 here. Spider should have that available. Um... That also helps, but that's only 160 stacks, that's less than four chests. Um, actually, I should probably... No, this is fine. As soon as they're full, we're going to swap them out for... Uh, passive providers, I guess. Naquitite doesn't stack very high. No, it doesn't. I guess the amount that bots are carrying at a given time could be a significant amount relative to chests. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and there goes our ship. All right, uh, first of all, I want to catch that ship. Which one is it? Oh, 
There it is, Stardust 2. Alright, I'm burying Stardust 2. Um, could you just stop for the moment, actually? Um, so we have a bunch of bots here that got kidnapped that are still holding Nacritite. But I don't see how... I don't see how it would have happened the other way around. Very odd. Well, I think... I don't know, that got, that got itself sorted out. Cool. I'll just leave that there for now. I think that's going to throw off the calculation, though, for when the ship should take off. So... We'll connect these up like so. That should be fine. Hey Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We are seeing trains picking up the Naquitite, so we're getting some throughput here at least. Um, Vitalic Acid still isn't keeping up. Uh, I imagine by now we've seen a spike in roast production. Or not at all, really. Could just keep following the same pattern. Um, it does take a few minutes for the Omni Smelters to change gear. Also, we're not we're not really picking up this roast apparently. What is up with that? Um, sorry, not roast, but nuggets. The stuff we turn into roast. Uh, this one's inactive right now. We've got 64k nuggets that we're requesting. Stack size is 50, I believe. Yeah, stack size 50. And we've got zero nuggets here. We LTN isn't reporting that there's not enough trains. Train limit is three. Um, how about this one? No nuggets. This one, no nuggets. This one, no nuggets. This one, no nuggets. How did we even get Vitamelange Spice with our current setup? No nuggets. And no nuggets. Um, are these requester chests? Yeah, okay, so we do have nuggets here. They're just... They're all in requester chests. They're not counted as being in the robot network. Um, but that said... That said, I would expect... At least one of these blocks to have a bunch of... Uh, nuggets. Alright, let me see the schedule for... Oh no, what's this train stop called? Uh, apparently we do actually have... One, two, three, seven... No, six now. Apparently we do have six trains in motion to pick up nuggets. So, what's the problem? It's turning Nugget into Roast that seems to be really slowing things down, at least for the moment. Uh, even though we seem to be running out of actual Vitamelange. Or, wait, how much are we requesting here? 16k. Stack size 50s, that's two train loads. This is definitely less than one train load. It's like 6.66 stacks if it's 24 chests. 
Um, not entirely sure what's going on here. Maybe it just needs a bit more time to catch up. I'm skeptical of that, to say the least. There's no condition on these? Huh. I'm surprised they're so balanced. Hmm. Well, that doesn't seem to be a problem right now, because it's saturated anyway. Uh, why don't we ride our personal ship to our biggest bit of melange planet in system. One of the biggest we'll ever find. Uh, we'll land here. We'll tear up this stuff and we'll get um we'll get currently call signed stardust 2 to land there as well what's the planet called again penium so you can be penium one I realize there's still a bit of an aquatite in here. We'll deal with that. Um, I don't particularly feel like making any exceptions to this ship design that doesn't bother carrying sulfuric acid or anything. Um, I quite like this design, actually. Oh, and we can add all of those extra buffer chests as well. So it's going to bring in... Quite a lot of Vitamelange in one go. Vitamelange processing is where I took a break last time. Processing seemed easier than the others, but it needed so much more of it. Yeah, it does take a few steps, but all of the steps are pretty straightforward, if I recall. Um, we've got Vitamelange to Nugget, uh, Nugget to Roast which is just needs an industrial furnace and some vulcanite. Um, where is that raw two water coming from? I guess it's for the vulcanite. Yeah, the vulcanite block. And then we go roast to spice and then spice to extract. The only step that doesn't that isn't just a one resource to one resource is the one that requires vulcanite blocks. But yeah, four steps in a row just to get all of our different types here. I'm seeing the inserters moving and we're backed up again. We've got seven trains. If this is full, 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 and full, more or less. Oh, and these two as well. Uh, let's say we've got about seven trains, or slightly less than that, on uh, per station here. Uh, six, seven's 42. There should literally be 42 trains scheduled right now. Oh, hello. Now this orbit... No train to transport ice to that thing. Between like three and three. Um, was that here? Yeah, it's here. But we're delivering ice right now. I guess it couldn't hurt to... Add a couple of short trains. Um, these are the trash trains. This is a perfectly fine spot to add these, though.
That's water. Let me just copy this thing's schedule. Small depot. And we're good to go. Uh, but yeah, back to Nalvis. Um, six sevens, 42 trains. Unless there isn't the demand for that. We've got max train limit three because we had like too much traffic parked around these before. But we've got three, six, nine. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 24. That lines up perfectly. Or it would if trains weren't delivering other resources here. Uh, but I see this one completely vacant. 31 trains are scheduled to come to a stop with this name right now. Well, this is huge. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Extra Raven. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What do you do with trash from the trash trains? Are those resources reused somehow? Yeah, um, I use vanilla trains to pick up trash because, uh, as far as I know, there isn't really a good way to tell LTN, take whatever is here to a certain place. Um, so we just have, anytime I've got like a separate logistic block somewhere, uh, there'll be a train stop somewhere in that block that is vanilla. Um, we've got this combinator here just says if there's anything in this chest, train limit becomes one as opposed to zero. Uh, I wish that combinator wasn't really necessary, but if you use enable disable, things get a bit weird with the trains rapidly repathing. Uh, and sometimes they'll just stop dead. Um, but basically, whenever we've got, like, uh, certain things are allowed to be in this bot network and everything else will get taken back to the mall, we've got read logistic network contents. That goes directly to a requester chest with set requests on it. So basically, we're trying to put everything in the logistic network into this chest. Uh, but then we make some exceptions. I just put a constant combinator next to it with a signal of negative a million for whatever we want to keep in this block. You could put, um, say we want to limit copper plate in this block to 10,000. You could put a specific limit as well. Um, but usually I just give it an over-the-top number so that those items don't get removed. Um, and the only reason we need two chests here is you can't, at least not directly, uh, read contents from a chest which you're setting requests on. Uh, we're here, or rather we're at our ship. Let's pick this up. Do I have everything I'm going to need? We need to make... Do I have clamps? I have clamps. Um, we've got bots and things. I think we've got everything. So let's go to Pentium. It'll be a pretty short trip to come back if I did forget anything. And as much as for a visual aid in where things need to go as anything else, um, I'm going to land this ship right here once I, once I remove this stuff. So, are you close to beating this? Uh, relatively, I suppose, yeah. Let's just stop making delivery cannon capsules. Um, I'll stop requesting stuff to be sent here. Hey, Revan. 
good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What's next? Research? Uh, good question. We did one of these, but it doesn't actually do anything useful. Um, we've unlocked Arcospheres, and we've got a basic uh, setup for balancing them. Pretty much, there's, there's eight recipes, eight different types of Arcospheres, and eight different recipes that go, these two turn into these two. Um... And here we've just got, originally it was four decider combinators that output one green signal each, and then green signal equals four. Uh, but I changed that to, uh, if lambda is above average, output one lambda, and that sets request on this requester chest. Um, this little combinator here just bumps up the average a bit, so that we're we're pretending the average is a little bit higher to meet that threshold to say bring uh, bring lambda spheres over here. Come to think of it, if I should probably set that a little bit higher because there's two recipes that take this as an input, so that number should probably be two, but then it'll tend to put a well sometimes it'll put an arcosphere lambda in the machine as well so it could be as high as four so worst case scenario we've got four arcosphere lambdas out of circulation if they're waiting to be converted so i think i should probably bump this up um, but yeah, we're just reading contents of these chests. This is where we're storing our various Arcospheres. Um, and then... Uh, we're getting the total count, each times one output C for count. And then dividing that by 8, which is the number of types of Arcospheres. Uh, and then sending that A for average over here. Um, but we also... Just because of how we're connecting the wiring up, we also needed to remove A for average from this combinator right here. Otherwise, it's going to get a bit weird doing the each times one. Some recipes need certain spheres as catalysts, and they modify them in the process. Yeah. So all of the Arcosphere recipes... Um, they don't actually consume arcospheres, they just take in one or two or whatever types of arcospheres and spit out a different set of arcospheres. So we just need to be able to convert and balance them back. Um, but the recipes uh, make it a little bit complicated. Also, when we turn vanilla arcospheres into the specific ones in the first place, um, we get we get machines uh, flipping between these two recipes at random. I I was hoping maybe if we have two of them start on opposite recipes and keep them in sync, uh, that they'd uh, what's the word I'm looking for that they'd complement each other. But it doesn't work that way. Um, they swap the recipe randomly. We could cheese it with Crafting Combinator, manually setting the same recipe over and over. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think, I, I don't feel like that's in the spirit of things. Thanks, think I understand it. We'll have to see them in practice, indeed. The tricky part is that you cannot directly influence what the sphere transform it, transforms, transformations will be. Randomness may screw your factory a lot if you don't prepare for it. Yes. Um, but the nice, the nice thing about Arcospheres is we never actually consume them. Um, 
we can increase our overall throughput by having more of them, but uh, we don't have to worry about running out of them or anything like that. Alright, we're almost at Penium. And I think I want to get ahead of things a little bit here and just request all of the Nacrotite be put in this chest. Um, I kind of need to wait for... Why are these not firing? I switched off this combinator, so we're not... Oh, they are firing. They're just that slow at recharging. One day when you're looking at a warehouse full of lambdas and no other types, you'll remember this. We don't have to worry, but I've already set things up to balance it, I think. That's my hope, anyway. Um, yeah, I kind of want to wait until we use up the delivery cannon capsules. Um... How about we get rid of this, turn that around. I am the sky, thank you for the follow. Well, welcome, hope you're doing well. Actually, we already stopped requesting stuff be sent here, so that's fine. Belka, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Hello to you too. Um, alright, we have arrived. Let's use the old landing pad here. And... I guess we're stealing uranium fuel cells? Luckily we don't use those here anymore. I really love the energy beaming. Um, I think in a future playthrough I'll probably go for energy beaming as fast as I can, among other things. Alright, so we're kind of waiting for this to run out of delivery cannon capsules, because that's the most low effort way to make use of them. Um... Damn, these cannons really take a long time to charge. Okay. Um, how is our... I'm seeing chests that are not completely full, at least. That's sort of a good sign. I didn't set the... the Provide threshold super high or anything. Did I? No? It's kind of weird. Alright. Uh, what we can do while we're waiting on that as well is figure out where we're going to add these chests. Um, probably here. And here. Not even close to becoming a problem yet. Can't really keep it too symmetrical, unfortunately. Um, we want to go to, like, maximum container stress for this. I could put some containers back here. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or up here as well. Do 
are we up to? 1506. Uh, I think it's... For 48 stacks it costs 24 container stress. So that's going to be 30.5, yes. Alright, so... We've got 469.5 to play with. Um, multiply that by 2. And we know how many stacks we've got. Divide that by 48. We can add 19 more chests. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 12 to go. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Should look reasonably neat. I don't know if the players be going to be able to squeeze through that at this point. Um, but I think I hate this less than the alternatives. Uh, we can do a few chests here, actually. Although that one wouldn't be symmetrical, but what is? We could go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I like that better than this stuff here. Oh, and the butts are now just hovering. Whoops. Anyway, let's not forget to connect any of this. Or set it to set requests. Oh, there's a chest missing here, actually. Alright, what are we up to? 1986? I think that's actually the limit. That's the limit. Okay, is there anywhere else I want to squeeze chests in and maybe not have it sprawl out this way so much? Uh, probably here, to be honest. So I think that'll be our new design. Um, let's update this. Great copy. Um, 2000 hole. Select new contents. And go. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's just make sure the uh, the green wire is connected to all of those green chests, except for our one-off over here. I think it is. Yeah, seems good. This bit of wire here looks extra tacky, and it is connected up here, so... Let's not with that. Cool. How close are we to running out of 
delivery cannon capsules here. Not very. I might have to cycle them, actually. So that, so that we don't use them slower and slower. are we working on? We're actually out of vitamelange here. But the nuggets are still... I think they are... gradually... getting consumed? It might just take a while before we see... Um, the furnaces catch up. Zero nuggets. Zero... Wait, what? Your overflow chest. How dare you. Uh, 7.7k nuggets. Okay, so we know that's functional, at least. And we're doing roast here right now. Roast is really slow. Oh, but it makes 100. Or rather, it uses 100 and makes 50. So that's fine, actually. Yeah, it is very weird how long it's taking to get nuggets delivered to the furnaces. Um, it almost makes me wish I'd done a dedicated roast build here, although the, the block would have a very different overall throughput. Um, how are our scaffolding spiders doing? Time to come back, I think. And is this train okay? Uh, yes? Wait, what? Oh, trash pickup destination. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I forget that this is actually a trash drop-off station, even though we've got some over here. Okay. Good time of day to you, Lazaric. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Um, this really is going to take a little while just to run out of the... Uh, capsules here. We can start deconstructing this stuff, though. I'm um, pretty sure we can just get rid of that. And we're not going to receive any more deliveries. I was quite satisfied with this build previously, but compared to what we're going to have here with a spaceship pickup... It's so much more sprawling um, than we had before. Um, we will need a a different setup for our ships that are going to come to outposts like this. Uh, we need them to bring... Uh, what is it called? Installation ammo? Media defense installation ammo as opposed to point defense ammo? Um, we usually don't need to, to bring ice, but I don't feel the need to change that. So, yeah, we'll need another drop-off like this one. 
I wish I'd blueprinted this because now we've got a ship in the way. Um, I guess I can just blueprint and then remove spaceship wall, shield, beam receiver, console, and so on. Uh, removing spaceship floor. Some of this stuff won't be able to be put down without spaceship floor. Alright, well, um, that'll probably do for now. It's going to be very fiddly trying to clear out all of this with right click. But more importantly, we won't be pumping antimatter into it or something. I also need to be careful... Hmm. I, I need to make sure we block a ship from landing here when I build this. Before we change the signal ID on this thing. I think the trees would... Pr no, I don't think the trees would block a ship from landing. Um... But this spider right here should probably have a steel chest or something on it. No, I think when I think we're done with steel chests. No, we've got steel chests here. Um, let's go with steel chest right about here. I'm sure the pipes would accomplish the same goal actually. Uh, here we're going to make a drop-off for the new type of ship, but with Vitamolunge. Maybe this is an opportunity, actually. Um, I do remember wishing that instead of having this pickup station on the left, I did something a little bit different. But I can't really remember how I wanted to do it. Maybe have this station down here? Because, yeah, the problem here is we've got the storage on the right and the Necrotite requesters on the left and bots are flying across the ship all the time. Um, but we've already scheduled our antimatter drop-off. Um, do I really want to turn this train away? Is it full yet? It's not full yet. Alright, let's get you to stop. And then... Uh, switch off this combinator. Train limit is one, luckily. I think we could still do water and sulfuric acid up the top here. And we can keep the water loop that's going to empty out excess water from this thing. I think I just... Yeah, I think I just want to swap... Well, if I have the antimatter drop-off up here, we're... We might get... We're going to get a bit of an asymmetrical flow rate of antimatter going into each side. But does that really matter? As long as we have enough pumps and few pipe sections from the antimatter drop-off to... Uh, to the pump on the right here, it shouldn't actually cause any issues. So, let's say we put this here, and we put this right about here. Tweak this a bit. 
Um, why don't we get the rest of our construction spiders in on the fun, actually? Where are our construction spiders? Oh, that's right. I was looking at doing a build of copper to solid rocket fuel. Um, but it's just so incredibly slow. Uh, it's not worth it in this context. Maybe if we're taking... Maybe if it's earlier in the game and we're taking a cargo rocket to a new place, um, we could use... We could use copper to refuel, assuming there's water available on the planet. Well, if the if it's waterless, I don't think we're even going there um, that early in the game. Um, but yeah. I was uh, I was going to use that recipe to to have another source of liquid rocket fuel, but and main, mainly, it's actually indirectly to get more petroleum. Um, it, it's to ease the, the burden on our petroleum supply. But that seems to have recovered. Crude oil, at least, is looking like it's actually been saturated for a while. This one's a little thin, but the storage tanks here are quite full. Yeah, crude oil is actually doing fine now. Never thought I'd see the day. Uh, what about our new blocks? A little bit less. There's no prod modules here yet. And here as well. And here as well. Cool. So what about the actual petroleum though? Um, I actually see almost 100k here. That doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, since 100k is our threshold for pickup. 12 times 8, I think that's like 100k. This is a bit short. Um, petroleum, very short, very short. Less than one train load. Alright, so we're still not keeping up with petroleum. Maybe I should actually do a build that just uses the basic um, oil processing recipe. Where is it? Uh, why don't we put down a refinery here? I like how the fuel from water recipe actually lets you get things like uranium from copper via scrap. It's a very small amount though. But yes, that is a strange alchemy. 10% chance of scrap. And then scrap processing... Doesn't it just not give you uranium though? Um, yeah, I think, I think I was confusing that with the small chance of uranium from core fragment processing. Alright, so we can actually turn crude oil directly into petroleum. 100 becomes 90. Uh... If we go 100 becomes 20, 70, and 30. Uh, I, I know light oil is the most efficient one. If we're going to crack it later, that is. And nickel plant. Maybe future builds... Um, if I'm going to do like an all-in-one block for oil, uh, maybe I should try to ratio them so that they'll always overproduce petroleum. What is happening? Oh, the spiders. The spiders are placing signals right now. 
And there is a bot coming. I mean, there is a train coming with bots. Um, that's ice. That is not point defense. That is not point defense. Cool. Great. Didn't you have a huge plastic shortfall, thus the ongoing need for petroleum? Yeah, we built a half block here just to make plastic, but these days it's always bottlenecked on petroleum. Um, so ignoring productivity modules, if we crack uh, light to petroleum, we get three becomes two. We get two thirds of our light oil as petroleum. So, 100 becomes 90, 100 becomes 30 plus 2 thirds of 70, 46, and heavy oil, um, heavy oil only becomes light at 4 to 3, so... Uh, five becomes, sorry, four to three, 20 over four is five, 20 over three, I'm confusing myself, uh, 20 times four over three, wait, what, three over four, 15, okay, so it's, Excluding productivity modules, we get way more petroleum out of this. I'm not sure what would happen if we use petroleum uh, pro modules as well, though. A repetitive beats. Good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, considering that we seem to be keeping up, more than keeping up with crude oil now, um... That is a dead mine. Let's get our uh, decon spiders. Where are they? I do wish it was possible to keep all of these remotes in a specific order. Um, we can we can move them around, but it just sort of swaps them arbitrarily. Name in base, sure thing. Uh, how about up here? Lazaric. L A Z E R I C. Fantastic. And I think the bots are already on this. Prod modules make the path with the most cracking a bit more effective. Hmm. We could definitely do a little experiment there. Oh, wow. We've already got so much media point defense here. Don't need to stress about that too much for a while. Uh, let's get rid of all of this. I guess we don't need the beacon either. Oh, I missed a little bit of belt there. Rip. Okay. Cleaning up all this old stuff is sort of therapeutic. Um, how much power do we... Wow, that's a lot. Oh, except these 2.4 gigawatt reactors don't actually give us 2.4. Um, because the heat doesn't reach the end of the pipes properly. Um, that said, we can probably... I'd like to find out. 
We can't really find out right now. But I would like to see if we can fit this many drills without adding another power plant. I guess since we've got all this stuff here, um, hmm, I don't suppose we have room to build one of these reactors without the biters getting upset. I mean, I'm sure they're upset, but without them being able to do anything about it. I just have to hope that that is within its limits. Let's see, uh, 2.1 gigawatts is what we were on before. Max consumption, 24 times 50. It's actually like 1.2 gigawatts, apparently. I'm sure we're way above the amount of power we need here. All right. Um, back to the Nalvis issue. That's not Nalvis. Um, I need to change the ID of this one. Uh, what's the, what's the ID for Vitamelange Core Fragments? Uh, 366? I don't think we're using that one. So our Vitamelange uh, ships are going to use ID 366. Cool. Um, and that should mean that I can now get rid of the trees and stuff here and everything else and we won't get a ship uh, we won't be getting a Nacritite ship landing here why are the bots hovering? oh some of the spiders are still overfilled I think that's why yep that's why Even though the wood goes straight to the trash, it has to first go into a regular inventory slot, unfortunately. And the bots like to put stuff in in split stacks, and this thing doesn't auto-sort. All I'm doing right now is using the navsat to just try to pick stuff up, and as soon as it leaves my hand, or the icon leaves my hand, it'll just automatically get put back in. So then the bots have room. Okay. Um, so this one's actually going to be uh, antimatter stream drop-off. We're going to have... Piping might be a little bit awkward. I think... I think I would like to... take from each side. Oh, that doesn't need to be a space... space pipe. Yeah, I think I'd like to take from each side uh, to get to each side of the ship. That'll help with the fluid flow. Could probably move that back a bit. It's fine. Don't need this. Uh, this looks good to me. And then that 
almost lines up perfectly. Unfortunate. Uh, why don't we add another pump? And what do we got here? A 15 and a 9. That's just a 15, and it's one off. I guess this is becoming... Wait, I was going to say two fives. That would be too, too many. Um, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Pick a dollies to the rescue. And... Go. Alright, so our target... Hmm. The only trouble with this setup is we have to have one station to receive for every separate destination. Um, unless I want to use circuit logic to code in some kind of dispatching system. Which could be interesting, to say the least. But it would be rather hard to, like, read and react to where the ships need to go. I think I would just cycle from one destination to the next to the next. Um, but I think throughput-wise it would probably be better just to have one station for each of these anyway. Who path. It's fine for now. Um, Alright, so Penium is... Planet one one five eight, and this is our destination here. Planet one one five eight. So as soon as the ship lands, it'll be given this destination signal on the red wire that goes to the console. When five of these conditions have been met, uh, we're going to send it a signal of spaceship launch. These are the things that we need to put into that one chest. What's the stack size here? Wait, what? Stack size. Oh, it's one. Entity order BA. I wonder what that's about. Anyway. Um... I don't see needing to replace that ever, really, but one stack is fine. Um, how many stacks do we normally have in our ships for ammo? Um, actually, let me just compare it to this thing. Uh, 1,000 stack size 50. That's 20, right? 20 stacks of ammo. That seems a little bit overkill, and I don't care. Certainly not at this stage. So, stack size 20. We just have to keep it below 400. 3 below 400 to be precise. Since that's how much we have to drop it down to make sure the bots don't oversupply. Um, we're doing core fragments for this outpost, so we absolutely don't need to be taking drills, beacons, um, honestly we don't need any of this stuff this time. And it's such a short distance away. Maybe I shouldn't have just removed all of that, but whatever. I'm not going to worry too much about the resupply stuff this time. Um, I guess we're already requesting a bunch of this stuff, though. That 
should be fine. I'm definitely glad I threw in a arithmetic combinator here so we don't have to type this stuff twice. Alright, so we'll be picking up Vitamelange uh, core fragments. So once the count of that in the ship is zero, we can maybe launch. Uh, we have to have all of this stuff in the ship. We have to have this much antimatter stream, this much water, and uh, I guess we don't care about sulfuric acid this time. Um, I'm just going to remove that, actually. Does this have sulfuric acid in it already? It does. Um, how about you just go to the nearest station with that name? And see if there's enough room to unload the sulfuric acid. It doesn't look like there will be. We do have a recycling system for water, um, uh, for fluids rather, on Nalvis. Though I think next time I would, instead of making this gargantuan system for recycling whatever fluid and also being a depot, uh, I think I would just have a station or a few stations that I specifically send a train to if it ends up overflowed with fluid. This was probably designed before I noticed that I could stop the trains from coming back to the depot if they don't empty. Okay. Um, we need to connect this, otherwise LTN won't know what's in these. Hey, Raren. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great Saturday. Thank you. Uh, what's our stack size? I think it's 100. Or Vitamelange. Or Fragments. Weirdly enough, um, when we send it through the cannons, we only get half a stack. We will need to expand the robo network down a little bit here. Um, but I don't want it to stick out so that it would connect to. If I were to do this block again directly below it, I don't want. Um, I don't want it to connect. That seems fine, probably. Fantastic. Um, why don't we finish this rail block? And I think we already got the power. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, let's get our spiders to finish what they're doing. Uh, which one of these is sulfuric? This one. Yeah, don't need the sulfuric acid this time. In fact, I'll get rid of that combinator there. Oh, and this will have to be green equals four. We got the spiders placing signals. So it's going to hurt our UPS for a second. Morpheus, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Six months, wow. Been watching long enough, time to actually sub. Thank you.
Wait, so... So, so that was six months in one go? Wow, thank you. Sleepy Dove, thank you for the Prime sub. Much appreciated also. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We should have a water train... Oh, right, this thing. Um, let's send it back. And, uh, Lazaric, thank you very much as well for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. This is a bit overwhelming at this point. Thank you all. Um... Yeah, so that's gonna empty. I'll do my best to keep doing whatever it is I've been doing. Alright, I think we have a train limit of one here, that's why we're not receiving water. Um, LTN's not gonna recognize that that's available until that train gets back there. Let's change it to train limit two. Oh my goodness. Uh, Lanarian, thank you for the sub as well. Wow. Much appreciated. Hype train. Wow. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, is this train okay? What? Um, whitelist logistic robot. Oh, I see what happened here. It delivered a bunch of stuff that does not include a logistic bot. So we didn't get the first logistic bot put into this robo network to get started with unloading. Or rather, that too, but we also put... We, we, we overfilled this chest before we got a logistic bot as well. Sour Haggis, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Two months, much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, again, thank you very, very much. Is this broken? Train Fluttershy arrived at requester Martin Entlich with unspecified cargo. I've never seen that before. Um, well, it's gone now. I don't know where to find it. We do have things in place to deal with something like that anyway. Hey, Nyron Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, looks like we've almost run out of, uh, delivery cannon capsules here, finally. Was that the last one? No, nope, I can hear a machine going. I thought I could hear a machine going. Did it just finish? How's the factory? Uh, going pretty well. Uh, we just reached a point where we spammed enough ships and Naquatite mines to shift the bottleneck a few times. Um, and at this point... Our Naquatide is actually bottlenecked on Vitamelange. Uh, turns out you need quite a lot of... Well, I mean, we knew this, but we didn't realize the bottleneck would sh shift that dramatically. Uh, we need quite a lot of Vitalic Acid to make uh, Naquatite. And our massive stores of extract actually got drained. And we had a couple of little bugs in this system, like I didn't have a high enough train limit on some of these stations. Um, but I think... I think we're past that now. It's taking a little while, or it did take a little while, to drain some of these stations of nuggets to get turned into roast. 
Um, but I think we're on top of that now. So presently we are looking at the biggest... I think it is actually just the biggest planet. 9644. It's the second biggest planet in our solar system. Happens to be Vitamelange. Um, and it's also very far from Nalvis. And the way we set this up previously was with delivery cannons. Um, but because they need so much energy to fire, uh, they're actually really, really slow. So now that we've got antimatter engines, um, we're going to replace that with a spaceship pickup. That's a lot of cannons. Yeah, it is. And we were still bottlenecked on these cannons um, when we only had uh, 16 drills here. Because they just take such a such a long time to charge up. 946 megajoules uh, for each shot. Hype train success? Nice. We got an emote? What does this do? Choo choo. <laughs> nice. That's the first for the channel. Thank you guys so much. This is taking a surprisingly long time. I guess it's not that surprising. There's a hundred Vitamelange per cannon. Big radius planets are nice for core mining, absolutely. There is another planet... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Um, I'm guessing... I guess wrong. Our construction ship... Where is our construction ship? No, it's... it's here. Electra orbit. Oh, I think I was looking at the wrong sun. Probably. Uh, so we want to get started making some energy beaming here. Um, we were looking at Irene as well to get some more Vitamelange. It's very, very close to Nalvis. Um, but also we've got other, uh, other planets in this solar system that are going to be useful. Um, but first let's finish what we're doing here since we just stopped our flow of Vitamelange. Or most of it anyway. We've still got Rose, but Rose is small fry um, compared to Penium. Like, very small fry. Um, Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is land our ship. And that's looking... Really good, actually. I'll probably move those belts, though. And we'll have the ship uh, land a little bit further south. And we're going to build our loading station around this. Did I... Oh, we didn't pick this up. That's probably why. No? Did I miss something? Uh, click on this little thing. Think on Pentium. And... Confirm? Okay. I think it's only when you have a clamp that it's trying to automatically um, clamp to that it's going to persist with that. I think 366 was what we set our ID to for this one. Yes, good. Um, that being the ID for Vitamelange core fragments. We now have... Uh, 75 chests to fill before this thing's going to take a trip. 
That is quite a bit. Um, so let's see. 100 times 48 times 75. 360,000. Assuming the bots completely fill it. Sometimes they fall just a little bit short. Um, why don't we just copy what we've got over here for this logic? Um, possibly because it's going to mess up the ID. So we're going to constantly give it a destination of Nalvis Orbit, or rather Nalvis, um, with this constant combinator. Looks a bit weird, actually. How about this? And we're going to give it a launch signal when Vitam Lunch Core Fragment uh, is greater than How, how close should I cut it? I'm only not putting in equal to 360k because occasionally the bots leave out just a little bit. Um, so let's say it happens with se uh, 75 times. That's like 300. Alright, so 359,700. 5k-ish. Congratulations, man. Really impressive game you've been running here. Thank you. Random standard. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so now we need to figure out how much core fragment is actually in the ship. Since we're using set requests, we can't read that directly. Um, so what we need to do... Well, first of all... Um, first of all, let's add some storage here. What's the max rate on each side so far? I might add more drills as well, but we'll get diminishing returns. Uh, two belts. Okay, we need more than two inserters to keep up with this. Um, why don't we do it something like this? And... I don't want the bots getting crazy um, before I do anything. Let's say that for the moment. Wait, what? Give, give, give me those core fragments. How dare you. All right. I'll just have a few purple chests here. And we'll have a bunch of storage chests here. So we're going for about half of 75. Um, so 40 chests, 38 chests on each side, let's say. How many is this? 30. I want to have room for a supercharger, though. This is a little bit cramped compared to our usual stations, but it's fine. Um, so that's going to go on the opposite. Safety reasons. Indeed. Oh, for... Well, it, it's not often that the bots don't completely fill a chest. So the 300... Uh, being 300 short before we take off is already being pretty safe. Um, we actually had, like, hundreds of hours of ships working perfectly fine, not taking off until they're completely full, 
before we had a bot, like, not quite fill a chest. It's fine you've hired an excellent pilot to park in there. I hope so. Um, Alright, so we've definitely got room for storage here. We can overdo the storage, why not? And then... Same thing on the opposite side. Um, these storage chests are only going to be permitted to have Vitamelange core fragments. We're going to read from them. Should probably read from the purple chests as well. Alright, so we've got Vitamelange core fragments going into purple chests, dedicated storage for the Vitamelange, and we're going to limit Vitamelange core fragments to uh, about what fits into 64 chests. Oh, we've run out of storage chests? Didn't anticipate that. I can do another 12 while I'm here. Um, don't have any stored over here. We only need 14 if we're going to do it this way. That is tauntingly close. What are we going to be short on steel? It's not like I can quickly get some iron. Alright, why don't we just... Trim that and pretend like that's what we wanted to do all along. Copy, paste, flip. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to set this to, let's see, uh, 56, well, we can include the purples, uh, 64 chests is 307k, just to be super safe and simple, we'll limit this to 300k uh, in the robot network, that is. There are planets and material random, or would every play be the same? Um, it's sort of between the two. Uh, apparently you always get a small moon with oil, uh, crude oil core fragments, as the closest one to Nauvis, for example. Um, I, I sort of assumed, since we didn't get Beryl in the solar system, um, that it would always do that. But apparently that's not correct. I'd be surprised if you can get a solar system that has every uh, every type of core fragment in it. But I wouldn't be that surprised. Thonian, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rekka, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Good to see you all again. Can you move some chests from the array left of the other ship, the ones that were already on planet. Um, oh yeah, we could use some of these actually. They're not very full. Cool. Um, should I actually put... No, I think the... Hmm, the bots love to fill a specific chest first. Which is a little bit suboptimal, but it's fine. Um, are we keeping up with the belts? I think we are. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're keeping up with the belts. Although, 
This probably shouldn't be on a corner right here. But it seems... It seems like we're not going to bottleneck there. Alright. We're going to need a roboport, if only to read logistic network contents. We're going to need a couple of pylons here. Um, if only to transmit this signal across. Let's put it here, actually. That's looking a bit tacky. Alright, so green wire goes across here. I think I missed this connection. No? Oh, these aren't connected yet. Looks good. I think they go to closest you could see seed the chests with 1H, but they'd probably get moved to the buffers before making things better. Yeah. It's not going to be a problem, I don't think, though. In fact, as long as these inserters don't stop, we know it's fine. And the, uh, the ships are going to bring more bots as well. Alright, so... What we're going to do here is... Subtract what's in the purple and storage chests here from the logistic network. And we're going to make sure Vitamelange core fragments never end up over here, for example. Um, and that's all it takes to figure out what's in the, uh, in the ship. We need an arithmetic... H times negative 1... Or we could just do Vitamelange Core Fragments. Uh, times negative one, output as same. And then connect to the RoboPort, connect to this inserter. Read Logistic Network Contents, that's our positive for everything. Minus the Vit Core Fragments that are here. It tells us what's in our ship. And then, uh, we're going to launch to Nalvis once we're ready. We could also set up some resupply of water, for example, but it's super unnecessary here, I think. Although it would be pretty easy, except that this stuff is in the way. It would almost be very easy. How's our power? Oh, that's not power. What? I'm being... I'm being blocked. Okay. I think we've still got plenty of power here. That's connected, isn't it? To the ship. Um... Uh, is it connected? It's kind of hard to tell. I don't think the wire would reach that far. Yeah. That wire connection isn't going to be there when the ship leaves, so I don't want that throwing things off. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell how much power we've got to spare on this planet because this reactor design is a bit flawed. The heat doesn't... It, it looks like... We're, I mean, right now we're gaining heat on the end. Um, but if we actually put it, push it to capacity, um, it doesn't get enough heat at the end of the heat pipe, so we don't actually get 2.4 or 4.8 gigawatts out of these two. Um, that said, 
Uh, I'm pretty sure we do have enough. To add some drills here. What the hell are these? Oh, that is Vitamelange. We don't want that in here. Let's see if we can empty this. That'll probably push it up to being bottlenecked on the belts. I might have to consider reshaping them a bit. Oh, do I not have... Uh... I don't have any more drills, apparently. Whoops. Maybe I should have done a bit more of a shopping list before coming here. It's a short trip anyway. Let's unload these core fragments. Oh, and one last detail that I sort of forgot for a minute there. We need to give a... I think we can use this one combinator for both of these functions and it's not going to mess anything up. If we send the console a signal of Vitamelange core fragments, it's not going to do anything. If we send the uh, buffer chests a signal of Planet 316, it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to connect this here and we're going to say Vitamelange core fragment 4800 in each of these buffer chests. Fantastic. Uh, and we can see here the count of Vitamelange climbing up for what's actually in that ship. point two K already. Alright, do we have room to just pick all this stuff up? Maybe. Probably not. I'll put some storage here temporarily. And maybe the other one as well. could get this ship to bring the core miners. So I'll add a request for a few core miners here. And we'll add core miner. That's going to get added to the one-off buffer chest uh, right here. Whoa, hold on a sec. I rediscovered the reason that I don't do this. Um, whoops. Let's get rid of that core fragment bit of melange signal. The red wire also goes to this one-off buffer chest that supplies bots and things. Um, so we don't want that one requesting a bit of melange core fragments. I could still do the same thing here, but add like a negative 
vitamelange on the red wire only, that would require the same number of constant combinators. Alright, so green wire goes here. And then... It's getting a bit hard to see what's going on. Uh, my trash slots are also full. Please help. Uh, we don't have enough storage here, do we? Can we do it this way? Did this not become a storage chest? That'll help. I might just have to add some more as well. In fact, I strongly suspect we'll have to add some more storage chests here. My ch my uh, trash slots remain uncomfortably full. Yeah, I think we bit off a bit more than we can chew here. All at once. Alright, so we should have drills on the way here. Or not. Did I put a negative? I did. Request threshold 1. Station is on. It did deliver bots. Uh, that's weird. Or mining drill, 49. Um, this station. Oh, it's in... It's in use. There's probably two other trains waiting. Provide threshold one. Okay, so that should get done. We somehow ended up with a single delivery cannon capsule that we didn't use up. Now this... Uh... Is this it? Yes it is. In you go. Give me half a stack of Vitamalange core fragments. And here you see just how long it takes this thing to charge. The recipe is five seconds, um, but the, uh, the energy takes about five to ten times as long as that to charge up. I wonder if we have enough storage here. Alright, uh, what do we got? 43k. Uh, that's pretty quick, actually. I mean, I guess I know we're getting about 90 per second, but still. Oh no, wait, my mistake. We're getting almost 180 per second. And this time it's it actually is going to be about that fast. Since we're not bottlenecked on the cannons anymore. Cool. Oh, I love how there's just pretty much the perfect amount of space to fit our new spaceship in here. Couldn't have designed it better if I tried for that.
All right. Um, I could add a little light display to show just how quickly it's fill filling up. Makes sense that it fits like a glove. You put a lot of work into designing it. Yeah, but I designed two separate things completely apart from each other. Spadge's channel. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Um, this just happened to be how all of those delivery cannons fit together in the middle of this. I doubt we'll need more than a couple of ships um, with such huge capacity to keep up with this. Uh, possibly even just one. It might be enough to have just one ship. Uh, speaking of which, we've got Stardust 2 is missing. Let's rename 11 to 2. Wait, not 22. Just 2. I'm very excited to see how... Uh, how our Naquium processing is going to jump after this. Of course, that assumes we're not going to bottleneck. Okay, I see some of these chests empty, so that's weirdly enough a good thing, um, because we're no longer bottlenecking on the trains just not picking this up fast enough. In fact, if we look at how much roast we've made lately... Uh, it actually hasn't changed much, I don't think. Okay. Surprisingly enough. Completely sat uh, saturated vulcanite. That is a sight to behold. And this is our second block like this. Where's the first one? Uh, where is the first one? Oh, there it is. Wow. Uh, okay. We're just completely full on Vulcanite. Uh, we've got 7.2, 14.4, 28.8 train loads of Vulcanite blocks just waiting to be picked up. That's at least seven. I'm surprised how long the bots are taking to do this. I guess there are only a hundred um, construction bots here. I should have done this sooner. Also, put, should have put down some superchargers. I didn't realize the scale of how much stuff we were going to have to um, empty here. If I momentarily remove this, the bots will go to the superchargers. Come to think of it, we don't really need that, do we? leave that here for now. Oh, the construction bots are coming all the way back here to recharge. I do wish we could get an upgraded regular RoboPort um, that had better charging. The superchargers not having any capacity is a little bit annoying, especially because the bots, they'll always sometimes go to the roboports. You can't, you almost can't get them to only use the superchargers. Unless you put the regular roboports 
like really out of the way and then there would be a bit, a bit of a delay at first when a ship arrives for example Seventy eight K four fragments. That is Well it's four train loads, right? Four and a half. And we're almost ready to launch. Um, we will want to make sure we leave some robo, uh, robots behind. I'll just be a little bit lazy here and copy that. Um, that's weird. Oh, I did it over here. From here. What was the first block or set of blocks that you assembled when you set up the rail grid in orbit? Uh, I think it was probably the mall. Uh, this is the first production block that we set up. It's got uh, the final product is flat solar panel 2. We've got a quad input here of glass, iridium, a little bit of... Why is this empty? Oh, it's not empty. A little bit of low density structures and chemical gel. Uh, and on this side, holmium plate, holmium cable, and lubricant. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of this lubricant storage was because we somehow accidentally sent um, way too much of it here. Um, we're also dropping off regular solar panels. Lots of scrap coming out this way. Uh, we also just output multi-spectral mirrors as well, because looking at FNEI, uh, it looked like we would never need too high of a throughput for that, so it didn't really demand its own production area. Yeah, it was either the mall or this one. Alright, uh, we finally... Nope, we haven't finished emptying our inventory here yet. But I think we're close. Alright, I might take this all back to Nalvis, uh, mostly just because we've got some Naquitite here. And who knows what else. Let's just check the Robo Network coverage. That should be fine. Although I note that we're not repairing this if it gets damaged, but we do have a lot of media defenses here. Uh, we need to, because it's biter medias. If one of those gets through, the whole thing is going to be destroyed. 92k. Maybe I should just wait until this is full and let it auto-launch. No, uh, I don't want to wait that long to run a test. Um, alright, so we're just going to temporarily swap the condition on this to less than. And then our ship is going to auto take off. Destination should be Nalvis. Fantastic. Anchor using 366 and 
366. Cool. Uh, everything should be ready. Although, I do wish the bots weren't crossing this. I, I wish they'd just take the shortest path every time. But uh, it's not that big of a deal. Alright, that should massively uh, increase our Vitam Lunge Core Fragment throughput. Because when we had the cannons, we were seeing the belts slowing down and stopping a lot. Did you subtract the one chest where you don't want to store things? Uh, do you mean this one up here? Or... I mean, this is just a passive provider and it's full of ammo. Not too worried about that one. So what we're reading is all of these chests. Uh, and we're subtracting that from the robo network. And then that's how much is... Uh, we know that that's what's... Uh, that's how many core fragments are in the ship. Because we're not, uh, we're not allowing core fragments to go anywhere else. The one on the transporter... Did you subtract the one chest where you don't want storage thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it may have some bit of melange core fragments right now, actually. I, I may have forgotten to empty this. But it's not going to actually cause any problems, because this will get emptied when it gets there. Um, the whole reason we need to do the read and subtract thing is because we can't directly read contents of these containers. So that total is going to include these core fragments here. So this ship is not going to take off from Nalvis until uh, core fragment vitamelange count equals zero. Is this the base game? No, they haven't added that much to it. Although they've added, they've added a lot of good stuff. Uh, mostly quality of life sort of things. Felantra, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I like that you have floating bots on it. Yeah, that's not intentional. Um, but the steps that I would have to take to avoid that is basically ensure that the entire bot network is not in motion anymore. Uh... Valantra, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um So did we did we do everything here? I think this is all working now. Yeah, I think we're good. And we'll add some more drills there. It'll probably maybe bottleneck on the belts after I add these drills. Uh, so I might change the shape of it just a little bit. Uh, Pentium 1 will be back at Nalvis in only two minutes. I really do suspect we're only going to need the one ship for this planet. And if we follow through and do this sort of thing for all of our existing outposts, uh, we're probably going to claw back a few UPS. Um, speaking of which, I think our old uh, rough data storage substrate builds... I see iron and glass here, yet I see nothing being built. Oh, I see. Because we're not merging and splitting that... The iron and the glass isn't getting to every block. That's fine. Uh, every machine. So, uh, I switched that off so that we could deconstruct it. Because we've built 
new blocks for that that use significantly fewer machines to get the same job done. They also have better productivity bonuses. Um, what about... Uh, everything but trees and rocks, please. Get rid of this old stuff. Do we have any more defunct mines up here that I need to clean up? That would be a yes. We got a whopping 11 uranium here. Somehow it was looking for 43. Uh, well, you can go, I suppose. And I'm not even going to bother to try and rescue that sulfuric acid. Off you go. I think I've got a straight rail deconstructor here. Uh, Earkraut, thank you for the follow. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're already back at Nalvis. Oh, what was the speed? I think we tested this already, but we're going 232 in our ship. That's right, 134. Um, we do significantly gain more throughput by adding chests, even though we're going slower. And uh, Will Oak, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. That is a lot of antimatter um, to take off from Penium with a 2000 container stress ship. But considering we're bringing back 300k uh, Vitamelange core fragments in future. Um, I'd say that's fine, actually. Alright, so we're going to anchor on Nalvis for the moment. And drop off all of this stuff. Um, why don't we make that a Double chest for the moment. And do we still have... we do. Not sure where I've got storage chests here. Still. Down here. And over here. Alright, um, so I'm beginning to wonder if this is enough, but considering I saw we weren't getting Vitamelange in here in the first place, um, that's probably a yes. Vitamelange core fragment processing itself can deal with 180 per second, um, and trying to Trying to go bigger than that in one block is actually a bit of a problem with belts. So we don't need to upgrade this or double it until... until we have to shift the bottleneck for this one, uh, if it bottlenecks on the belts. Of course, that is completely ignoring rows as well. We are get oh, that's more than I thought. We're getting 60 core fragments per second out of this. Uh, but actually we're not because it's running entirely off of solar panels. Um, what's the day-night cycle like here? It's like every two and a half minutes. Hmm. So core mining 
stops for about 30 seconds every two and a half minutes. That's so it's down like a fifth. So really we're getting like one belt of uh, core fragments out of this. That's still a bit more than I was expecting. I could go to the trouble of uh, beaming energy down to rows. Uh, and then we could get consistent core fragments. We could upgrade this to... This is actually really making me want to um, do what I talked about before, which I haven't figured out yet. Whereby we could have one Vitamelange core fragment drop off here. What is... Oh, I see the problem. Um, we don't actually need... To check for which fluid we're putting in. Since we got rid of the sulfuric acid. Ask him for playtime of this save. Don't, 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 don't do the, the, that. On part 170 and there's like five plus hour streams. Yeah, uh, it, it's a long playthrough, especially going in blind. Um, and especially, especially if you're going to take the time to like utilize the technology level that you're at to its fullest. Um, as opposed to sort of powering through to try and get to antimatter engines or something like that. Of course, there's only so much you can do with that. I think if I was going to try and like play through this as quickly as possible, I would probably go with cargo rockets all the way to antimatter engines. Um, but it was more fun designing spaceships over and over. Also learned a lot this playthrough, um, with circuits, with belt sushi, I mean splitter sushi is what I'm trying to say, um, where it's not using any combinators or anything, uh, what? Hmm. Oh, the output is actually full. Well, that's not exactly a problem, is it? Yeah, that, that's a pretty good reason to stop some of the sushi here. Uh, but yeah, this is only using splitters uh, and nothing else to control a sushi belt. We've got 50-50 uh, space platform plating and blank data cards on half of the belt. And iridium plate takes up half of the other half of the belt. We output the iridium plate back onto the belt if it gets recycled, uh, and we also output the particle shielding data onto that vacant half of a belt. Um, so that works out pretty well, and the contaminated scrap comes out somewhere else. Um, but without using a counter, or without reading from a section of the belt, or anything like that, um, we're actually consistently managing uh, our belt sushi here. Look at this contraption. Isn't it beautiful? These nuts, indeed. Raids us. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit intimidating, uh, perhaps, looking at this in one go. But all we're really doing here, uh, a few times is, uh, let me just stretch this out a little bit, so it's a bit more clear. So we have our input coming down here, uh, we also merge in the stuff that we're recycling as a priority, so this will slow down if, if we're recycling this stuff in. Uh, and then we bottleneck on just one belt, or half a belt, in this case. Whatever we're putting through here, we split it 50-50. 
uh, and the 50% that doesn't go through gets recycled. And because it has input priority, it's going to slow down this part. So basically this contraption uh, gives us 50% of whatever throughput we would normally get through here. So if we're just putting half a belt of whatever resource uh, through this, we get half of half a belt. Uh, and if we split that again, we get a quarter of half a belt. Uh, so with so that we have a specific amount of room for our other resources. And then when it, when it all loops back, we just filter things off and filter them back in like so. Uh, thank you for the follow, Raidsus. Uh, it feels weird that just a couple of weeks ago or so, whenever it was I built this, uh, it was pretty hard to wrap my head around. Like, kind of a headache to try and keep track of it all at once, but already I can explain that um, pretty easily. But yeah, it's a very neat way to do sushi. I like it. I'll be using that a lot more in future. Um, I think we're done here. Let's... Do I want anything off of the mall here? I don't think so. Um, I could drop off my prods that I happen to be carrying. Oh, I'm not standing in the robot network. Alright. Let's go back to Nalvis Orbit. What was that place? Wexavis Orbit. Replace the storage chests? No, um, even if we have empty chests, it actually costs us... Well, actually, as long as the container stress stays below hull stress, it won't really make a difference. Um, but yeah, empty chests uh, count just as much as full chests when it comes to container stress. And whichever one of these numbers is higher uh, basically determines the weight of the ship and how, how slow it's going to be, how much how much fuel it takes to move around and so on. Um, so I just threw those storage chests in there temporarily. What is this ship doing? It's waiting to anchor on Nalvis. Oh, I didn't update this yet. So 366 is our target. Um, anchor to target, 366. And 366. Fantastic. Um, so what have we got here? 100k? 93,000 core fragments, not counting what's in the requester chests. I doubt we're going to need more than one ship uh, to keep up with 180 per second, although we might need more bots. Those should already be getting delivered. Yep. Although, I don't know why... Oh, I do know why it's delivering productivity modules. It's actually going to this block, and that's fine. It's just that the station had the same name. Did I see core fragments go into the trash sorter? Uh, yes, yes you did. That is a common mistake I make. is I forget to whitelist uh, over here. I can get the construction bots to deconstruct that. And then undo. There's probably going to be a sad um, trash train that's going to arrive here right about now, actually. Sorry, trash train.
Good call, Sleepy Dove. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, the steel chest found its way here. Okay. Now it's in storage. And... Hopefully the bots will rebuild that before the requester chest. There we go. Cool. Um, I am curious to see that this doesn't get full before our ship comes back. It's actually, I was going to say surprisingly full, but it's only... The, the bots are starting in a very peculiar order here. A couple of vertical strips of full chests, except for this one. On one side. A little bit odd. But as long as it doesn't slow anything down, it really doesn't matter. It probably would slow things down a bit more, if not for superchargers. Alright, we are back. Um, don't know that there's anything I want to... Oh yeah, 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 Arcospheres. Uh, how many Arcospheres do we have here? Well, not Arcospheres, but Collectors. We've only got ten? I thought we had at least four more. There probably wasn't the request threshold to pick them up yet. Hmm. I think we'll just launch this thing first time. Request stack threshold three. Oh, that's request. Provide stack threshold is ten. All right. Um, I think we'll just take only 14 collectors for our first trip. Because I want to keep an eye on this and check that it's working. Let's get in our spider. Uh, set the remote. Can probably get rid of these extra physical remotes that I've been carrying, actually. Can I swap this? Settings. Other. Uh, is it under other? Or uh, interface? Sort. Always keep player's main inventory sorted. There we go. Oh, there it is. Uh, I don't need this one either. That goes there. And I'm just gonna chuck these back into the mole. Don't really need a set of physical remotes um, with the nav set anymore. But having one handy for my personal spider is uh, pretty nice. Behemoth biters are almost as bad as dragons. <laughs> are there dragons in this game? Uh, you can probably find some with a mod. I wouldn't be overly surprised. That's weird. How are you looking for 28 Naquim cubes if we didn't have that many? Well, it'll sort itself out in the end. Uh, we're heading over to this ship. And there we go, we've got 14 collectors. I'm going to change the provide threshold here back to 40. So we're not going to bother picking these up until we can fill a short train with them. Um, and coincidentally... That's exactly how many we need to get this thing to launch. Hey, Scale the Summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Have you already produced your first batch of Naquium Tesseracts? Uh, not just yet. Probably soon-ish, TM, because we're about to go launch uh, 14 Arcosphere Collectors, and we already had 26 Arcospheres. I'm a little sad that I didn't write down uh, or quickly try out the idea that I had to improve this. But this will be functional anyway. I could perhaps... I think I thought about this yesterday. Um, if I could make it so that these two conditions have to be met, otherwise we don't set requests on the requester chest. If we pulse a set requests, I don't think the bots are going to bring it 99% of the time, if not 100. Do the Arco chests actually consume Arco spheres? They do. Arco link storage does consume them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get in here. And we're just going to budge uh, the launch condition on this one. Oh, I didn't even connect this yet because I wanted to make sure I see this work. Um, so Arcosphere Collector has to equal 40. But we're going to change that to 14 for a moment. There we go. Alright, I forgot I put antimatter engines on this. This will be a short trip. It's the exact same shape as that other ship because we're going to use this outpost that's already here. They'd be pretty OP otherwise, yeah. So, how does it work? Is it like the contents of two chests in two different places is just synced up or something? Like, if you put it in one chest, it's in the other chest simultaneously? It's a linked chest? Yeah. That, uh... That kind of solves logistics for physical objects forever. The sinking is just a bit of a process. Hmm. What's our ETA? Nine minutes? I've come to expect better from antimatter engines. But we, on we only put two antimatter engines on this. Okay. Um, I guess we can give our focus to Electra now. I haven't actually looked at where we're going to anchor here. We're always looking for um, a nice big chunk of free real estate. That's not bad. That's pretty good too. That's less inspiring. And let's look to the right as well. Has a speed restriction to 100? Uh, oh, the chests? Yeah, I, I don't know, of course. I'm keeping blind on most things. For the ship I'm on? Oh, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it would need more defenses. And it's not going to be making this trip very often. Auto save. Might actually be a good time for a break. Uh, I want to see the Arcosphere collecting happening first. I'll take a break after that.
Oh, what's happening? Are we placing rail signals? I don't think so. I think it was just recovering after saving. Uh, that is a pretty big chunk of land. Or rock, or whatever. I think we'll probably go over here. I think, uh, over this way. Let's start over here for now. And we're just gonna start... We don't have enough scaffolding for a single block of solar panels. Um... But it'd be nice to get started with... So what I'm looking for. Uh, some media defenses, if nothing else. I wonder what the save file is size is now. Uh, about five point six, uh, about five hundred and sixty, a bit over half a gig, if not creeping towards point six gig. Um, installation. How can we fit? Th did I even get it to? Yeah, I did. I think we'll definitely add some scaffolding here. We can easily manage six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's add a little scaffy scaff. Don't actually need to place it here. The bots won't do it anyway. But they will take the time to try. Alright, we should be able to power that uh, just with a few solar panels, I think. And pressing question right now is, do I want to continue using... Oh wow, that covers a lot. Um, do I want to continue using the delivery system that I've already got with the ion engine and a single nuclear plant and no room for solar power and I think the number two of this ship uh, may actually be yeah it's still very slowly running out of fuel here just because there's, there hasn't been any demand for that other ship to take off. Oh well. I wonder how small... Well, I think that was the point of that ship, actually. Even though we only had Ion Engine at the time. How small of a ship can I make that'll go interstellar? I wonder if we could do better with... I don't think we could do better with an antimatter engine... We need at least one condenser turbine, regardless. Unless we just run off of accumulators, which is possible, but it's not going to get that far. It was surprisingly... It, it, it was better than expected when we did it in uh, the sandbox, having a ship that just ran off accumulators. Um, but not for the distances that this thing will have to go. Um, but yeah, let's steal from ourselves. Um, Angelus, perhaps? Here we go. So this is our station for the Interstellar Quartermaster delivering us uh, media installation ammo. Um, I think... Why did I switch that off? Oh, I think I kind of remember. Yeah, we need to set up an arbitrary letter 
to represent Electra. Have we used E yet? We have not. We'll need to get our construction spiders to pay this place a visit. That is a bit of a distance to walk. Uh, so we're basically just going to add... I want to put it in alphabetical order, actually. Move that for the moment. So we're just going to add... Um, star, whatever the ID is, and spaceship launch signal if E is greater than zero. Uh, and they're all... all of those uh, signal transmitters are transmitting on the same channel. What's your current slash time? Uh, we went over a month. We did it. Hooray. By the way, you can show the setup of your construction spiders. Uh, sure. So, let's see. The current iteration hasn't changed much, actually. Uh, we've got six uh, personal RoboPort Mark IIs, a couple of exoskeleton legs, and just enough power that we can run the exoskeleton legs consistently with a tier 2 portable RTG and some batteries. Um, as for the requests, um, I haven't done it on the ground yet, but I split... Because we have to carry so much stuff and because of the way the bots do the wrong thing with, um, like, splitting stacks. Uh, I just made it so that there'd be a lot more empty space in these spiders. We've got two different sets of things that they carry. This is, like, belts and things like that, mostly high stack size stuff. Uh, and this one is mostly, well, it's, it's all of the, uh, assembly machines and some beacons, modules, and so on. So that's why there's two colors of spiders in the construction group now. Uh, and this is the old construction group, and I was too lazy to get them all to follow this one directly. So I just got the leader to follow this leader. Should probably do something about that. What's our ETA? Six minutes still. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Electra and see if we can't conveniently fit this down here. That's going to be pretty good, actually. Um, let's get some scaffolding. Almost perfect. Uh, Sensei, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Right, uh, that'll do. I'll have to move that combinator, of course. But I hardly want to place that down now, anyway. Why can't I place the RoboPort? Oh, is it actually, like, here that this needs to go? Yeah, I think it is. Perspective is a bit weird. Well, this looks crazy. Uh, what about it? Sushi Cat Yum. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Can you show the setup of... Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Night Dancer. Welcome, welcome also. Quichen. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we will be needing some power. How is our power? It's actually insufficient, but that's only because all of the uh, 
all of the cannons were charging at the same time and it was barely not enough. Uh, that said, it would probably be a good idea if we threw down a few more solar panels. Emulators wouldn't be the worst idea either, particularly with uh, the cannons doing their thing. This channel is already correct, actually. And I'll just double check and steal from myself and uh, make sure, but I'm pretty sure all we're going to do here is once we get below, I don't know how much uh, media ammo, uh, we're going to send a signal of E for Electra. What was that value? Just so we don't have to calculate it again. Uh, 1,900. In fact, I'll just copy this. Alright. So, if we drop below 1.9k media defense installation ammo, I think that means there's room to take on an entire delivery. Uh, then we're going to send signal E. The reason we can't just send a destination signal is because they'll actually add up. Uh, and I think it was on the red wire, wasn't it? Um, I'll just double check that. Angulus. Yeah, on the red wire. Um, planet orbit. We already set that up, didn't we? I'll just double check that that's connected as it should be. Yep, looks good. Alright, so if media defense installation ammo in the ship is empty, um, or if uh, media defense installation ammo in these chests is full, then we're going to output everything input count, which includes Nalvis Orbit and Ship Launch Signal. Uh, and I could improve on this, but this is functional. This, th this just holds on to some repair packs, even though the bots want to take them out of Robo ports to put them in buffer chests. Um, do we not have any? That's weird. There's no media defense installation ammo in our construction ship. Well, better get some delivered. So back at Nalvis Orbit. Um, we can add this now. Uh, and that's going to be... If E is greater than zero... Uh, no, 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 no. Where are you going? Oh, no. Master... Interstellar Quartermaster. You're trying to go to Nalvis Orbit. Uh, what? Well, I guess that works itself out, but I don't know how that happened. Um... I need to get the signal for Electra. Star 946. 946. It's happening again. Alright. Oh, I see what happened. We gave it a spaceship launch signal with no destination. 
while I was messing with that live. I should have turned off the constant combinator. So I think it's going to send both of these, uh, which is a little bit overkill, actually. Because we don't have, um, we don't have like a, a memory system where it knows that it sent a ship to Electra. I was going to say it couldn't hurt to send more, but actually we've got like one, two, three, four, call it, call it six full chests of ammo per ship. We've got eight chests here. Whatever, they haven't been do any, doing anything for a while. I'll just check that they are indeed headed for Electra. Oh, where are we? Three minutes, 27 seconds. Okay. I might just quickly remove the clamp target signal. Or are we going to keep going if I... Yeah, I think it holds on to the last speed signal that it received. Does that mean we could give it a speed signal at launch? That'd be a bit weird. Anyway, um... I, I, I want to witness it when we land at Stardew. But yeah, Electra has ammo on the way. Um, oh, I wanted to check the destination star, 946. Uh, star, 946. And they are both headed for Electra Orbit. Fantastic. And they're headed there rather slowly because this was an experiment in how small we can make a ship uh, that goes into Stellar. And we only had ion engines at the time. So it's very, very bottlenecked on power. Um, but considering the volume of media defense installation ammo that it delivers per trip, uh, it really isn't a problem. Although, I wonder just how long it's going to take to get there. Uh, it hasn't reached Mars yet. ETA 90 minutes. Okay. Uh, it might be time to abandon that novel experiment. Uh, and slap an antimatter engine on a ship like this. Possibly. But uh, we'll do that a little bit later. Two minutes until we reach our destination. Let's check everything else we've been playing with lately is working. Uh, I do not see our Vitamelange core fragment ship taking off. This is why we test. Uh, core fragment Vitamelange equals zero... That seems to be true, actually. Uh, I think it's only not taking off. Oh, we haven't got the anti map. Oh. I forgot to summon the anti map to train. So we need a bit less than half of 400k. We need two trains of antimatter before it's going to take off, because it because we make sure that we're basically full before we take off. I also need to add a energy beam uh, to recharge this thing. It's going to take a while to run out if I don't do anything, but still. 
Um, do we have some spares? We do not. I'll grab one of the old construction ships and send it to Calidus Orbit. And we might have to add some power. Yeah, we definitely need to add some more power before... Before we can add more... Um, energy beaming. It's such a short trip, I think we'll just... I wonder... Hmm... I was going to say we're only going to recharge it at one end of the trip. It would probably be best to do it here? If it makes any difference at all. Yeah, I imagine we'll spend uh, the ship will spend more time here than it will at Nalvis, since it takes a really long time to load up. We're, and we're bottlenecked to 180 per second here. Uh, at Nalvis, we're only bottlenecked to as quickly as the bots will unload it, and we do have a system for bringing in more bots if necessary. Okay. I still can't figure out how to make a resetting clock that carries another signal for crafting combinator. Resetting clock that carries another signal. So something that sends a signal through like what once per minute or I'm guessing it's a bit more complicated than that. I did save that, um, I just realized I deleted something that took me a long time to make earlier today, but I think I have it somewhere else as well. On Pentium, I got rid of some circuitry that sends a pulse on a timer, um, do we have it at Lothar as well? No, I haven't updated Lothar. Via Terra, that's probably it. Yeah, because we need a certain amount of throughput um, for these items, so we send multiple stacks at once. Uh, and we want to allow it to... We want to allow a few stacks of most of these things. Especially explosives. Um, but we have to send a pulse because uh, because the only way we can control, or the best way we can control when these things fire is when we put in a delivery cannon capsule. Uh, if we don't send it as a pulse, we're going to get like three delivery cannon capsules put in uh, before it receives any resources on the other end. Um, but sometimes, sometimes you send a pulse and for whatever reason resources don't get to where they're going. Uh, so I had to build a system to send, just send a pulse when it wants resources, but to try again in like 30 seconds or a minute or something. Um, so I came up with, let's see, this is just the normal part to begin with. We've got the resources that we want, uh, each less than or equal to one, output one each, and we also read from the chest. And then uh, we've got a timer that uses each, so it's actually a timer for as many different signals as you like. You can see that the timer for Iridium pl uh, ingots is running at the moment, and it just stopped because we received Iridium ingots. Um, 
And then we need to use a pulse generator to detect when that timer is running for which resource. So currently, uh, currently it's running for explosives and for iridium ingots. So that pulse generator is just two combinators receive something at the same time, each greater than zero, output one each, or input count each. Uh, and the other one receives the input at the same time, and one tick later, uh, the other one receives negative one times whatever both of them received. So therefore, it only gets whatever's coming in here for one tick. Um, I forget why, but we needed to add one to all of this that goes over to our final combinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this thing outputs one when the timer is running for explosives, for example. Uh, and this thing outputs whatever this timer is on plus one. And somehow... Yeah, when, when those two add up to two, we know we're, uh, we know we're at count one. We're, we're, we're at count equals one for the timer, and we know the timer isn't moving right now. Or is moving right now, rather. Because if we just... if we just look at the timer and say, okay, when the timer gets to one or six hundred or something, then we pulse. Uh... No matter how unlikely it is, sometimes the timer is going to stop on that number. So we're checking that the timer is on a specific number and that the timer is running. And then under those conditions we send out that signal. What's that massive grey rectangle? Um, which one? For the Omni Smelter, so it holds a signal for like 30 seconds to a minute, etc. Um, well, I can show you what I did with the Omni Smelter. Uh, we start with the assumption that we're just going to try every recipe. So we've got each recipe here on this constant combinator. Um, if everything equals 1, output everything 1. And then uh, this memory cell here, each greater than zero, output each one. Um, so this is going to be receiving two of, of something if it hasn't been removed, I think. Solar panels? Oh yeah, that's what that big grey rectangle is. It was around the sun, right? Uh, Calidus? Yeah, that is that is a whole lot of solar panels. Um, each square of this is 255 uh, solar panels. So we're actually looking at uh, about 6,000? 6, 6,000. I meant on the planet? Uh, not sure. Oh, let's see this thing work. So, originally I built this for deep space uh, probe data. Um, but I wanted to jury rig it to work with... Um... Why is this not... Oh, it is. It's just very slow. I wanted it to work with Arcospheres as well, but Arcospheres give us diminishing returns, so we don't know what we're actually getting out of it. So we can't count on a precise count of, for example, interstellar void probe data um, to tell us to take off again. So I added a timer system to this. Um, when the spaceship arrives, if anything is detected from here, uh, output one spaceship, that's like where our constant combinator usually is. Uh, we have a memory cell. If R equals zero, reset equals zero, output ship input count. 
So the ship has been here for 1300 ticks. 1400. Uh, we're going to reset that timer when these inserters do anything. And we're going to reset that timer if there's no ship here. If everything from that equals zero. Um, so we know the ship has been here for 2,000 ticks. And... Or the inserters haven't swung for 2,000 ticks. Uh, what did I set this to before? 18,000? We're about to find out just how extra safe that was. I want to see the moment that this inserter swings. Um, oh, I missed it. What number were we up to? About 2,000, I think? So, I think it was a good idea to set this extra high the first time, if I wasn't going to watch it. Just in case this happened uh, while, while we weren't watching. But, at this rate, it's looking like maybe 5,000 would be a pretty safe limit. So that's Arco's Sphere Collector number one on its way. And then we're going to get output here. Uh, the input inserter is going to put in more Arco Sphere Collectors. We've reset our timer again. Ooh, how many did we get? Uh, five. I don't know what I was expecting, but five is probably more. Although, eh, maybe not. All right, let's see. Let's see what the count gets to this time. Takes about. I want to say two thousand ticks before this thing finishes its recipe. percent 1.4k that was a pretty bad estimate actually but it has to do its little animation and everything as well why do we have a bot hovering with point defense ammo oh this has a kill so we know that wasn't a waste Slow motion silo. Doesn't it finish the entire launch? Oh. Never mind. It doesn't actually launch before this thing swings. So, yeah, I think if we set this to 5,000. Or even 3,000. 3,000 might be cutting it a little bit closer, but not that close. And it takes about... Eleven hundred ticks, I think. Yeah, less than 1,200 ticks before the output. We got 10 Arcospheres. So we got, what was it, 5 and then 5 again. 
Uh, it seems the diminishing returns don't kick in immediately. So I guess out of 14 launches, I doubt we can expect 70, but we can probably expect more than enough to get Arco Spheres uh, balanced. Alright, let's look over here for a second. Um, how much scaffolding do we have? 1.2k. There's not a whole lot we can do with that. But I guess it doesn't hurt to try and make a start. But maybe we could... Start with what we'll actually get done here. Let's check. Where are we up to? It's peaking out. 2.2k, 2.3k, maybe 3k is a bit reckless. 2.4... Oh, there it goes. It was like 2.4. I think I will leave it at 3k. I could put it at 2500, but... I don't mind this thing sitting here for a few more seconds to make sure it doesn't, like go home early. Cool. It's going to take a while to work through all of those Arcosphere collectors. Let's just chill for now. And I guess we'll get ready with some words on stream. And I'll take a short break. Let's just double check we've got that working. Seems good. Um, but before I do, that goes there, please. All right. Words on stream starts in thirty seconds, and I'll be back in a few moment, uh, a few minutes rather. Hey, Daniel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, back soon.
Skip another three. One more. One more. Okay, how do you all do? Pretty good by the look of it. Another double skip. Alright, let's save that for later. And back to space exploration. Um, I'm not surprised we're still here launching... Uh, Archosphere Collectors. In fact, we've got another another nine launches after this one to go. Um, we're about 30% of the way through collecting them for this trip. And we got 22. Fantastic. Alright, I think I think we'll have more than enough Archospheres to play with um, to get a feel for them. When we go back from here. Meanwhile, at Electra, the bots have placed scaffolding in an oddly specific pattern. That actually works out very well. Um, we've got way more than enough power for the moment, but nowhere near enough to place a energy beam. We need. One gigawatt for uh, the transmitter itself. And we need one gigawatt for each uh, energy beam injector that's going to add energy to that beam. So we're pretty short for the moment. We need to go back and get some scaffolding. Um, but we have... Oh, we do have a little bit of media defense ammo here. A whole four shots. Hopefully that'll be enough um, that we're not going to have some damage by the time we come back here. Did I leave any bots here? Yeah, I did. Cool. Alright, um... I didn't really anticipate just how long it would take to launch all of these Arcosphere Collectors. Um, so I guess I'm not... My, my player character is not going anywhere for a little while. Why do I not have a ship here right now? Uh, there's one here at least. Oh, right. Let me guess. 
because all of our Stardust ships are still waiting their turn to land at Nalvis. Yep, literally half of them. Alright. So we still really, really need Vidamelange um, to ship to that bottleneck again. We've got... Vitalic Acid right now. The fact that we've got it at both of these blocks suggests, but doesn't guarantee uh, that we're catching up. Because we've got two blocks that make Vitalic Acid. Um, and neither of them is in motion at the moment. We don't have any Vitamelange here. That's not Vitamelange. Hmm. Uh, did this thing not take off yet? That's kind of a problem. Oh yeah, we didn't have the antimatter fuel. And it was going to take a little while to get here. So we've got water, uh, we don't check for sulfuric acid. We've got antimatter fuel. We don't have everything that we're looking for in the requester chest. Uh, the buffer chest, that is. We're looking for core mining drills, a media defense installation, and some ammo. We need to remove the uh, the old stuff from here as well. Oh, didn't realize we had a spider here. So as soon as we get rid of all of these media point defense ammo, um, I forgot to request the installation stuff as well. And ammo. Uh, I don't remember how much we need. Or I didn't get around to figuring that out. Uh, wait, yes I did. 400. So asking for a thousand here should be way more than sufficient. Um, I guess just one chest full? No, we might end up adding ships to this. So why didn't we get core mining drills? I thought I saw a bot was scheduled... Uh, a, a train, rather. Was scheduled to deliver... Core mining drills earlier? I just realized I didn't whitelist them. Um, bots, repair packs, drills, and an ammo, and vitamelange. Bots, repair packs, drills. I don't think we need a million. Um... Installation and ammo. And you may as well let the bots deal with that as well. Okay. So now our requests are. Well, they're already sent, um, but more importantly, we should have those things being delivered. Um, I did see earlier we had a train bringing core mining drills, but they must have gotten taken away.
That's a lot of work for our single stack inserter to do. Um, could I perhaps get you to get out of the way for now? Except then it's just going to get in the way of the other train. There's, a, there's another train or two that's on its way here. Two to be precise. Hmm. I could disable this station for the moment. And I'll put that signal back once we're... once our ship is ready to leave. Just making sure that's not going to cross any spaceships. Still got seven launches to go. We are halfway done, and we have 30 arcospheres. I think I'm... Yeah, we're already getting a little bit of diminishing returns here. Alright, what should we do in the meantime? Construction ship is heading back. Oh yeah, Calidus. Uh, could you please anchor next to the new solar panels? Actually, I'm pretty sure if we go here, we can do three of them. Um, I will put down a supercharger for the moment. If the bots get around to it. We do have one. Oh. No, we don't have a supercharger here. That's a bit weird. Uh, well. It's gonna take a while. To make this. It's gonna take a long while. May as well put the solar panel back and I'll just lay out lots of scaffolding here so that we don't have to check on this too often. Stay a while and listen, indeed. I'm really surprised we ended up with no super... Why is that a passive provider chest? Oh no. Uh, alright, I need to remember to update that. Or I could just deconstruct this old ship and replace it with one of the new construction ships. Um, did I blueprint? I don't think I did. Let's make a copy of this. And that can go here. And we'll make a second one. Uh, once again, there's going to be a really big run on the resources that we store here to fill up this ship. So... We'll set and forget uh, once the once the floor has been placed. Come back here in a while. Uh, also, I'm sure we'll need another hauler sooner or later. So let's just get it ready to begin with.
Oh, and now that I think about it, um, do all of our Stardust ships have buffer chests now? Stardust 1, Stardust 2, Stardust 3, Number 4, Looking good so far. Number five. Number six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Uh, ten. And I guess we don't have an eleven right now. What was I testing here? Oh, I remember. Yeah, that was the one we used to test how fast it would go with more chests. And 12, which is going to become number 11. Cool. Let's rename this one. Okay, so the reason I just checked all of those uh, is we added a request for green chests at Nalvis with set requests here, uh, and now they're all able to upgrade themselves in flight. And the reason I've waited to upgrade them all at the same time is because with this set request system, um, we actually need to... We actually need to be able to know how much the ship can fit. Well, I could either leave it I, I could either have empty chests, um, wait, what number was that? Stardust 3. I could either have some of them carrying empty chests, which is a waste of fuel, um, or I could wait until we upgrade all of them at once, and then we're going to change this signal right here, how much Naquitite they have to carry um, before they take off and head back to Nalvis. Come to think of it, um, I guess I can just use copy-paste. Since we don't have to worry about the spaceship floor or anything. Uh, none of the signaling on this side is going to change because we're still going to launch when Naquitite equals zero. should be way more than we need for a long time to come. Uh, and now let's calculate 75 chests times 480 is 36,000. And we're going to assume that the bots under deliver as much as possible. 35,900 should be good enough. And don't forget, we need to upgrade the settings on this, this spine up here as well. Cool. Smoothest upgrade ever. Did we get the prods over here? Yeah, we did. 
All the more reason that we might actually need two of these mines because um, it's going to take a lot longer to fill an individual ship. Do we not? Oh. Oh, I never actually put a beacon over there because we were waiting on that little bit of scaffolding. I think the ships are carrying this, so that'll get done automatically. Seems like some of your Stardust ships are stopped in space. Uh, yes. So, some of them have reached Nalvis and they are just waiting for their turn to land. Uh, because the one that's at Nalvis is not leaving because we, we haven't unloaded all of the Naquitite. Because we're totally saturated on Naquitite for the moment, um, at least at the step before we process it, because we're bottlenecked on Vitalic Acid. Um, and that happened very, very suddenly as we added more and more ships to keep up with our mines. Uh, check, indeed. Akira, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, that other ship is in motion. Anium. ETA. Two minutes. How much do we have on Pentium right now? 300k. Um, so yeah, we lost some Vitam Lange core fragments because we didn't get that ship launched fast enough. A Mazzle Fazzle. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Name in base, coming right up. Uh, we got an M. We got an A. Double Z. L E. M A Z Z E L actually. F A S S E L. S S E L. A uh, putrid one. Thank you very much for the prime sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Doing okay, tad bit hot where I live at the moment, but I'll live. Well, I'm glad you will live. Uh, we need some robot range over here. And they're going to have to recharge at some point. Probably. Cool. What are we up to? Two more launches, or three more launches to go. We got 40 Arcospheres. Fantastic. Uh, Penium is still on its way. Interstellar Quartermaster ships are crawling to their destination. Although they don't have that far to go. Construction ship Antimatter construction ship number two is going to take a while to fill up here. Oh, and we need to, in order to get it to put fuel in the first time with this design, we need to give it a little pulse. So, empty uranium fuel cell. And on this side uh, as well. I guess they're not going to be in sync now because I messed that up. Uh, whoops. Tragic, really. Used up uranium fuel cell. Cool. 
Cool. How much time have you spent on that save? Uh, quite a lot. Bearing in mind that the UPS is lower, but uh, about a month, actually. But we have been playing this blind and stopping to totally redesign things and so on. Rip? I don't... I wouldn't call it rip. Uh, time you enjoy wasting and all of that. Speaking of... Spaceship floor, why do we have none? We've got another 400 on the way. How much spaceship floor are we requesting here? Because I feel like it's not enough. 1.5k, and this costs um, 313, so actually, yeah, I would have thought this was enough. I don't know why we're suddenly out of it. Uh-oh. Right, we've got 1k here. That's rather odd. Seems like a single play save. Yes. With how many people do you work on this save? Uh, just myself. Except that Twitch chat helps catch mistakes and stuff like that, obviously. Okay. Um, I want to get a feel for whether this one ship is enough for our Vidamelange. Uh, now that it's not going to have trouble taking off from Nalvis next time. I guess really what I need to see is when it arrives on the next visit. Uh, thank you for the follow, Akira. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That is some good fast loading. Uh, we're already at 3,000. That is 1% of what this ship can carry. Together with chat backseating, that slows things down significantly. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's, it's all perfectly welcome, but um, when people ask questions and stuff like that, for example, uh, a speedrun, this is not. Uh, that does put us over two belts of, oh sorry, four belts of um, Vitamelange core fragments now. So, I guess I should have this belt go up here and come down this way. That's going to be a bit awkward on this side, but I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. I'll have to head out there relatively soon to fix that, but it's not going to it's not going to be that much of an impact on our throughput at the moment. Um, but we do already have, or we will have, um, enough throughput that we're going to need another block to process Vitamelange core fragments. Doesn't the low UPS drive you crazy? Not so much. It's not an action game after all. Um, it does feel better if I jump into a game that's at 60, obviously. But, you know, this game is about design and automation. So it's not that big of a deal most of the time. Especially when the bottleneck to get things done is still me. Um, like, I can't exactly keep up with all of our, like, multiple construction ships working on different projects at the same time and everything else constantly. Um, like, right now I could be designing uh, another I was going to say another four, but it's actually another eight data cards. Um, but we kind of need... 
I wonder if I should do a bunch of these in one block. Maybe even the same block as we're recycling the Arcospheres? Because th the throughput for this is going to be pretty low, at least at first. Probably indefinitely, because we get diminishing returns on Arcospheres. I mean, it is about production maximum as well. You basically got a 70% debuff? Well, not really. I mean, the, uh, the, the like, science per minute that we're going to produce is going to be the same regardless of UPS. Four data cards, just that the Arcospheres make everything into two recipes. True. Because it, it'll occasionally switch. I'm glad that they show the product as, for example, zero times Arcosphere Phi. So you don't have to look around everywhere to figure out what it's actually doing. So it takes the same inputs every time, at least. Uh, 20 second crafting time, four different inputs. I'm... I, I might take this excuse and do some sushi again. We can have two resources on each side of the belt. And it looks like all of these follow the same pattern, actually. We've got... Aquium plate, two types of arcosphere, and significant data in. Uh, I just realized the um, the throughput of arcospheres is going to be like way too low for belts, actually. But they do all follow the same pattern. Um, one Aquium plate, two types of arcosphere, and significant data in, plus thermofluid. And then, oh, this one's a bit different. The output is two types of Arcosphere, four types of Arcosphere, two types of Arcosphere, and four types of Arcosphere. Zeta, Theta, Omega, Gamma. Zeta, Theta, Epsilon, Phi. There's some overlap there, but whatever. Betting ar belting Arcospheres, that sounds optimistic. <laughs> Just a step below pushing them into LTN. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling for the foreseeable future we're going to do all of our Arcosphere stuff in one place. Um, so we'll need LTN to give us plate significant data and thermofluid and take the thermofluid and data cards away. And I think we'll just use bots. To request just one of each of all of the... What kind of overlap do we have here? Zero? For the inputs? Yeah, literally no overlap for the inputs. So I think it'll just be a line of one machine of each type, uh, each each of these four recipes, um, so that we can do the thermofluid. And we'll use bots. Okay. Um, that being the case... A burgers and fries, thanks for the rate. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, name request for Chucky, sure, no worries. Let's put it right about here, I think. How's your stream, burgers? Welcome, raiders. Uh, Chucky, Chucky, where's a C when you need it? C-H-U-C. -C. 
not a whole lot of use. Here we go. Tied Lamau just started a K2SE run and struggling with getting started. Yeah, the start is pretty slow. Um, I would definitely... I would definitely give myself some easier or just faster settings when I do another playthrough. C-K-I-E. And this thing's... In oh, it's actually fine. Uh, do we want the zero zero one or just Chucky? Hey, Ziacon. Welcome, welcome. Might be doing well. Uh, I should make these a bit neater, maybe. All right. How about here? C I A C O N. Uh, I know we have a C up here. A. O. N. No need for the numbers, no worries. Alright, there we go. Cool. And we are what is going on here? Oh no. Oh no. I thought I ran into this problem before and fixed it. Um, okay, that's... Don't tell me I did that over here. Yeah, I thought we I thought we had this exact problem and fixed it. Um, well, there's plenty of room in the tanks, so that we don't waste any antimatter. Um, that's not gonna work. We're gonna need it like this, and on this side it has to be a little bit different. It's fine. This is fine. I promise. Alright, we'll do underground there and underground there. Cannot connect systems with different fluids. Huh? How does this have a hundred and Fifty antimatter. There's antimatter in the. There's antimatter stream in the condenser turbine. I didn't know that was possible. Uh, don't do that. All right. Um, this goes here, this goes here, and so Why did this happen after getting all the way to our destination? And as we were heading back, I wonder. It only kicked in just as we were leaving Stardew? That's very interesting. It definitely don't sound good. We had what we need to, needed to fix it. I'm glad I personally came here with the uh, with the ship. All right, what's our loot? Uh, what? Why does? Oh, there's no robot network here. That's why. Um, so I'm not sure how many. I'm not sure how many arcospheres we have right now. I could manually count them, but I know we have like 30 or something. 
20 chests and we've got at least 40. A little bit more than 40 by the look of it. Almost every chest has two Arcospheres. That's pretty good. We can probably expect around about the same amount when we come back with 40 uh, Arcosphere Collectors. Hey Shack Cut, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Hughes Mike, good to see you again also. Uh, Felka, I didn't quite miss that name in base. F-E-L-K-A. F-E-L-K-A. There we go. And, uh, Salonian. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, what's our ETA? It is almost 10 minutes. Alright, let's check on our Pentium ship. It's still getting loaded. We are at 273,000. Oh. Oh. Could that be bad? It would definitely be bad if we had more than one ship. I told these things to stop loading when we have 300k Vital Melange core fragments in the logistic network, but that's what... that's what the ship... Well, this is an easy fix. Um, instead of the logistic network, we're gonna query what's in the... what's on the green wire. And then get rid of that condition. Cool. Uh, so, 289k. Oh, it's actually 360,000 that can fit in this ship. That is a lot. Not that 300,000 isn't a lot. Three sixty k core fragments. So that turns into... Uh, 16 becomes 10, but we have a productivity bonus of like 56%. Let's just pretend it's one-to-one. -one. 360,000 Vitamelange. And then we need two to make a nugget. Uh, nugget to roast is... two to one again, so we've halved it twice, but we're ignoring prod modules there. And then it's halved yet again to turn it into spice. So ignoring productivity bonuses after the core fragment processing, um, We'd only be looking at 45,000 uh, Vitamelange Spice. But again, that is ignoring uh, significant productivity bonuses along the way. Not all of these have tier 6 prods either. How many prods have we been making lately? Uh, 0.3 per minute over the last hour. 2.1 per minute over the last 10. Did we run out of blue circuits? 
Doesn't look like it. Um, I see motion here. Well, seems to be working. Oh yeah, I forgot to put this request back here. Productivity 6. Why are there no Rod 6s here? That's a little weird. I wonder where they've been going. Oh well. Hey, Seafica. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, thanks for the raid. How's your stream today? Welcome, raiders. How are Arcospheres? Uh, we are heading back with 40-something Arcospheres right now. That we got from 14, uh, Arcosphere Collectors. Uh, that's on top of the 26 that we already had. So I'm pretty sure that'll be more than enough that we can actually balance them. And, uh, next thing we're gonna do here... I, I was looking at the recipes for the next few data cards, and all things considered, I think for now we'll just have everything Arcosphere happen in the one block. At least we, until we get a feel for it and or have more Arcospheres. So I'll put some stations here. Uh, let's get our construction spiders back over this way. We'll get them to swing by the mall just in case they need anything resupplied. And don't step on the spaceships. This train is looking for batteries, and I haven't programmed that in yet. In fact, we've run out of space in our... No, we haven't. We can fit 32,000 batteries on a train. So I have to give it negative 32,001 to meet the condition of anything equals one when we're reading from these steel chests and this these sets of combinators here. Um, that way we know we've got a train load of batteries and we can load it all perfectly in sync. How are your ships going? Pretty good, actually. Plastic is a pain? Absolutely. Petroleum is a pain. Uh, I'm very happy with the latest design of hauler that we've got here. Um, it's a little hard to see it all here, actually. Stardust. Um, so we've got 75 uh, chests, other than this one that we're using to resupply various things. We use set requests on all of them. Um, and we can calculate at the destination or drop-off uh, how much is in the ship by making sure that we count all of the naquitite that's outside of the ship and just subtracting it from the logistics network. Um, but yeah, this thing with as much container stress as I can give it uh, still has a speed of 134, I think it was. Which is significantly more throughput than if I keep the whole stress under a thousand and it goes like 200 or so. The ships are going whoosh, indeed. Uh, not as many ships are going whoosh right now, because we built enough of them to go after Naquitite that the bottleneck shifted dramatically. That was a lot of damage to our shield there. Uh, yeah, but 
I'm surprised I saw that after adding all of these chests, actually. If anything, this should be a lot safer. Hmm. ETA, 13 seconds. There should already be a ship here, I imagine. Nope, there's not. So it's probably going to land here. They, I think they just arbitrary, arbitrarily come to this mine first. Um, but yeah, in order to figure out that the ship is full, um, we read from the robot network. Uh, we read from all of the chests that may contain Naquium here outside of the ship. We subtract that from the robot network. Uh, and that's our total. And I'm really liking the set request systems. Um, it makes it really easy to make changes to many ships at once. Uh, but yeah, currently we are bottlenecked on Vita Melange. Uh, I was going to say sulfuric acid, that's not quite right. Um, Vitalic acid, specifically, is what we're struggling to keep up with in order to get Nequitite. So we're trying to speed that up as much as we can. Uh, went to Penium, which is one of our biggest planets in the solar system that gives us Vitamelange. It's... Uh, 9,491 radius, and it's very far from Nalvis. So when we had a bunch of delivery cannons here, we were bottlenecked on those, because they just take so much energy and so much time to charge. Uh, so we swapped that out with one of the new um, spaceship designs. It can carry back 360,000 uh, Vitamelange core fragments in one trip. And we've also been eyeing up, uh, I think it's Eirene, 4.2k radius. Uh, we haven't touched it yet. It's very close to Nalvis. Um, mainly for that reason, we're getting started with setting up an outpost here. Speaking of outposts, um, we're actually, like, only 80% of the way done placing this scaffolding. Okay. I'm not too surprised by that. Uh, our new construction ship is ready to go as well. So, I'll just name this one first. Where is the console? There it is. Oh, it's still getting loaded. Alright, we'll send the uh, original. As long as it doesn't completely empty itself of logistic bots. Electra Orbit. Off you go. Actually, I'm seeing a lot of empty chests there and, and realizing it didn't actually resupply on scaffolding. Whoops. Back to Nalvis Orbit with you. The shield don't look like they cover fully. Uh, they do a good enough job. Um... Technically, there's a little gap in here, but it's completely covered in lasers. Unfortunately, if we're building around this energy beam receiver, we can't quite put this where we would like to. But we've been running these ships for a while now and haven't had any trouble. Um, that's not a guarantee, but it's becoming less and less likely that there's an issue there. 
Jelly the Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Um, I'd really like to start working on these data cards. can probably have just one station for drop-off. Oh, it might be a bit unnecessary. It's not too late to move this stuff, um, so I might do that. The trouble is the spiders are going to pick up the arcospheres. Let's just see what this looks like first. I would rather be there personally to fix this. I guess as long as the spiders don't come back to the mall until I get there, it's going to be fine. So we need Naquium Plate, Significant Data, and Super Cold Thermo Fluid. Um, we're already going to use the robot network to deal with this, so... We can definitely bring all of that stuff in in one train. Let's start with the thermo fluid. In fact, well, I would rather have another station for the output data cards at least, but if I really wanted to, I could... I could have one station do everything here. So we're going to go with some purple chests. I don't think we need a whole lot of them. And some storage here. We need one grab facility for each data card. Uh, it might be nice if it lines up like so. I'm sure we won't need that much throughput of uh, fluid here. Um, which recipes are we doing? Space dilation data. Space folding data. Whoops. Uh, space injection data. And space warping data. So just everything with the word space in it. Except for time space anomaly data. Uh, Ravelix, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And 25 degree thermo fluid will output here, I think. In fact, I could definitely do all four of the data cards output there. Um, let's copy this for starters. Oops, go the other way around. There's no middle between these two. It's going to be a little messy. Oh, we can do it like this, actually. I don't mind that. Maybe over here instead? Nah, I like this well enough. And 
then 15, nope, 9 and 4, I'm guessing. Rip. Uh, how do I get 13? 5, 5, and 3. I hate this. I just want it to be neater. No. I could add a pump and pretend like I wanted to do that all along. Uh, so this becomes, what, 11? That's kind of worse. That's the same problem. What if this came over here? No! <laughs> Alright, fine. I'll just put an underground there. Okay. Um, storage chests. I might want to move those closer, but it's probably fine. What are we looking for? Uh, it's just uh, significant data and significant data and um. Why am I blanking on this? Plate. Naquium plate. In fact, this is a pretty convenient layout. No, that's... That's counting on it staying balanced by itself. Uh, I think I will just stick with this, actually. And we'll read contents of all of these chests. Or these chests, rather. It's not, go not gonna look neat no matter what I do. Actually. This'll do. Alright, so we are looking for... I'm gonna need more chests if I'm gonna do a whole train load of one of each resource. We could just make it like a buffer chest instead. I don't mind the look of that. And we're looking for neck queen plate and significant data. 20 times 48. Uh, 900 and... Uh, 960, actually. Plate. And significant data stacks to 50. We're not actually going to get it that full. And then... Like so. We could probably request a little bit more than one Nequim plate for each of these, but on the other hand, the recipe is so slow. 
was really no need. Um, and then, are we at our destination yet? 48 seconds. Cool, cool, cool. Just do request chests. For the output. And I might do... I know the throughput overall is going to be really slow here, so I might do one of the simplest uh, precise loading systems that we can. So our first one is space dilation data. Um, I'll actually limit that to what goes into a cargo wagon. Next is space holding data. Space injection data. That sounds pretty exotic. And then space warping data. Alright, so we can fit exactly one train load, or one cargo wagon load, into each chest. Um, because we know it's going to be 2,000 that goes into uh, the cargo wagon, we just need to set the stack inserter... We just need to set the stack size to something that divides evenly into 2,000. So not 12, not 11, and shockingly 10 works. Space dilation data. Actually we're gonna set filters on this. So override stack size 10, that's gonna be static. And we're going to read from the logistic train stop output and set filters and uh, provide stack threshold 160 is a full train load therefore we're not going to pick up unless we're getting a full train so we're only, only going to be picking up one type of data So that should be all it takes. Space injection, that's when you need to put more space into some space, like a TARDIS. Space surjection is when you need to spread some space over a larger space. Yes, that sounds logical. Does the NAC unloading need filter inserters too? Uh, yes, it does now, actually. Good, uh, good point. This one is Naquium plate. And this one is significant data. Boop, and boop. Cool. Um, and then read contents. Let, LT know, uh, let LTN know what's available for pickup here. Do not connect it to the train stop. Connect it to the train stop input. And I, I very much doubt we're going to have more than one train coming here at a time. But that should do it. What's our max rate here? 
0.005 per second? Oh no. Well, we haven't given it any speed modules or anything yet. Have we arrived? We have arrived. Let's get our remote ready. Okay. Um, I might like to move all of this a little bit. We don't need two of these. Um, that didn't accomplish what I was hoping it would. Um, we do need Arcospheres to be dropped off here. Can I do a short train instead? Because then we could do the Arcospheres here as well. Um, significant data. I don't think that is balanced for a short train. But I guess we could allow it. It's totally saturated anyway. And then... Naquium plate as well. Uh, provide stack threshold of one. That's not going to work. I'm going to bump this back up so that it needs to be full before we summon a train. Um, so this is 24 times 20 stacks. 9,600. Well, hang on. Let's use the stack threshold. 480 stacks. And we'll allow short trains to pick it up. So... We could probably get rid of... We're going to need the piping regardless, but... Oh, negative 273 degree thermofluid. I want to make sure of that as well. It's got a really slow throughput. And I'm sure we allow short trains to pick it up, because it's a fluid. Okay. So we can probably get rid of all of this, since it's going to be so slow. Since these are six tiles apart, I'm sure there's no... Oh. Well, there's almost a neat way to do this with the pipes, but not really. Let's just do it with some undergrounds. So we're going to do short trains only here. Uh, Naquim plate, maximum... In one chest is 960. Also, the fluid should be 25k. And significant data is 2000 or 2400 for the chest. And then we can fit 50,000 negative uh, 273 degree thermofluid. But it'll only request when there's room for 25k. 
That should be fine. And plate, I mean significant data. And thermo fluid. Oh, let's switch that on. Um, we also want Arco spheres delivered here. Like vanilla Arco spheres. I can just put that here, actually. Or maybe if I planned it better to begin with. Um, we could have had it inserted directly. But it's fine. And I'm pretty sure I did assume we're only going to have short... Tr wow, okay. Um, I forgot to expect that. Provide threshold is one. We've got uh, 45 arcospheres. And short trains only. Okay. Data is on its way. Uh, we can fit 48 arcospheres in there, so... We'll look for that. Request stack threshold 40. Uh, I wish I could separate it. So that we have a smaller request threshold for the arcospheres. Um, I could do it if it was on a timer, cycling multiple different sets of settings. But I don't want to go that far. Request threshold 30k, that's for the fluid. Provide threshold 1, that's for the arcospheres. This is switched on. I think we're getting... Oh, the train limit here is 1. So we've got one, two, three, four resources. Let's do that. Oh. We should see a train scheduled to bring Arcospheres shortly. What's going on here? How... How did we have this thing get over full? It should be... Oh, I see. It's not trashing all of the unrequested items. Okay. And we didn't quite get enough Arcospheres to finish the job there. And a bijection is just right. Not too heavy, not too light. It's going to take a moment to unload since it's just the one inserter. Um, how close are we to getting a Naquium plate delivery? Not very, unless I force it. Um, we're still bottlenecked on acid. And I need to check on our ship, the Penium. It's still loading. 340k. Uh, did I miscalculate? Is it actually full? I think it is actually full. Hold on. The This wire isn't connected. Which means probably all of the ships I updated 
are missing that wire connection as well. If you have bijection between a space and itself, then the space is exactly the size it is. Seems good. Alright, um, I'll check back on this in a second to see if it auto-launched. Um, but we need to check on... Our Stardust Crusaders. Yep, same wire connection is missing. Alright, Stardust 2. Stardust 3. Stardust 4. Stardust 5. Six, seven, octo, nine. This is way more ships than we need, but we didn't find out until we ran out of um, vitalic acid. And this ship is not leaving with an aquatite for the same reason. Uh, which one was this? Number 10? And we do have a number 11 still. Alright, let's check out Penium. And it's in motion. Fantastic. So we've got... 359,000 um, Vitima Lunch Core Fragments here. And still some bots are hovering with Vitima Lunch Core Fragments. I could have sworn I calculated that we can fit 360k. There's probably... Oh, wow. That is an extra bit of free storage right there. Which mod lets you auto-trash unwanted items on Spider? The mod is called Auto-Trash. What do we got? More data cards. Fluid. And Arcospheres. How many data cards do we have here? Eight stacks are empty. Oh, you were just going back. Okay, cool. I thought it was going to oversupply. Fantastic. Let's get a beacon in here. Um, all the speed, why not? I'm sure we can afford it power wise. How much is this using? 24 megawatts. That's not even that much in the grand scheme of things. I was going to ask if the spaceship would take bots with it that were passing over the ship when the ship left. Seems that it does. Yes, indeed it does. Uh, and it's really not worth the effort of trying to prevent that. It's better to just make the ships uh, bring some bots for resupply. Um, since we're loading with bots, unless we want to limit a robo network to 50 anyway, uh, we will need to resupply robots. So we want to do that anyway. The spaceships are filthy bot thieves, indeed. More like kidnappers. Gotta keep the outposts resupplied or they'll eventually rob them all. Yeah, and I actually had an outpost... Deadwood, where we're getting almost all of our coal. Um, the reason that I've got such a paranoid... Uh, surplus of bots here is this place actually managed to get to a bot count of zero just automatically um i was a bit shocked that it had happened but 
it did happen. We ended up with zero logistic bots in this in in this network. So coal and therefore basically the entire base uh, pretty much screeched to a halt because of that. So yeah, that's something to watch out for. Alright, the Arcosphere production continues. We've got at least a little bit of each Arcosphere type. Okay, so we need some Naquium Plate to test this out. How much do we have here right now? Like three? That's actually a pretty close estimate. Um, I want to make this a super high priority. So we can see it working. I'll force a delivery of Naquium Plate for now. I find media is a thousand times more annoying than bot attrition. Um, I don't. Pink pajamas. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I turned off bot attrition in lure files. It was just annoying, not challenging or anything. Yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance. Um, just having to have a supply line of bots wherever we use logistic bots. Um, in fact, looking at how many bots we're losing, uh, 2,000 in the last hour, 34.6 per minute. That's a bit rough. Alright, we should have Naquium Plate here. Good timing. And the first place it gets delivered to should be our current block. Although that's not going to happen until these chests are full. Come to think of it, I don't think I waited for enough. Um, let's just drop the threshold for a sec. It's basically the same thing, only you have to supply ammunition for orbital defense instead of bots. You don't have to deal with your ammunition randomly crashing, though. Although, with enough bot attrition research so that they just don't deal damage when they fall, uh, I guess it's really not that different. In one of the earlier versions, when the bots crashed, they dropped the cargo straight below uh, wherever it was. If that happened over a belt, the belt got contaminated <laughs> with whatever they were carrying. Boom, instant challenge. <laughs> that does sound like an interesting challenge uh, if you opt into it. Wait, where are you going? Oh, did I set the priority on this even higher? Prior request priority 11. Request priority 1k. Min max train length 3. Uh, min train length 3. What? What? Um, at this rate, I'm just going to go there and manually pick up some plate to get this started. We do have a short train picking this up. Okay, it is coming here. Never mind. It's waiting for a long train first. Uh, they're going to take all the plate. Uh, 
Um, so much for the high priority. I guess we need to set the train limit here to one, so that they're not take, uh, taking turns arbitrarily to come into the station. You literally had to have decontamination sections on every belt over which bots were flying. Oh boy. Yeah, that sounds... Not the best, actually. Alright. Plate. Don't, don't, don't take... Be gone. Bad robot. They are just very motivated, very excited to take from my trash slots. Alright, you can get going. Spider can get back up here, please. Sounds like no mixing of bots and belts, yeah. I mean, we don't mix trains and belts, but not mixing bots and belts sounds a bit more inconvenient. How do you even do that blacklist only what's supposed to be there? Yeah, you'd have to have, like, filter splitters and way too many of them. Mix all the things. So, whenever we're going to have enough resources to do any of these, we're going to be doing all four at the same time, I think. Because they all depend on... Well, significant data is easy these days, but Naquium Plate is the main thing. Oh, and we need an output, of course. Um, how about here? Um, I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, it's good to test things, but this is looking pretty straightforward. Like, we already did the balancing of Arcospheres. So, I don't think we're going to have too much trouble here. It is going to be rather slow just because Naquium Plate until we get Opius Vitamelange. Speaking of which, um, where is our ship? Enium. Probably back on Nalvis. That is definitely our ship. Uh, I didn't activate, well, I'm actually surprised we didn't get an antimatter stream that was trying to be delivered here. Bit of melange core fragment, uh, provider actually. Oh no. It scheduled it before I could change the name. Now if I change the name, it's going to mess up the trains that are on their way here. I'll just have to wait until we don't have a train picking this stuff up. How many chests is there? 75, and this is 48. So we can fill all of these chests up one and a half times. Um, for each trip. Actually, now that I look at it, we definitely want to be able to do that a bit faster. I don't suppose we've got the chests here that we need. 
Oh, we were going to deconstruct this. I completely forgot. Well, this is more urgent at the moment. I'll need to wait until that's placed so that I can connect this wire as well. Also, what happened to our deconstruction spiders? That's right, they got rid of that old mine. Alright, cool. What about this one? And get rid of that extra bit of straight rail. That'll be enough for one trip. Back to the mall with you. Uh, do a little dance. Let the bots... Uh, let the spiders get emptied and then head over here, please. Okay. So we definitely want... Um, we definitely want these trains being loaded as fast as possible. Especially because we're going to have more ships coming in here, I think. I really... I think I do want to try and set up this drop-off being for this shape of ship. No matter what the destination is, as long as it's going for Vitamelange core fragments. Um, the only trouble is, the only way I can think... Uh, the only easy way that I can think to solve that is we have like a list of destinations that we cycle through. So if one of them requires more ships than the other, we're not going to get a good balance. I heard it should be huge building 13 by 13 or 20 by 20 or something like that for the space elevator. Yeah, I would imagine so. What do you think about it? I think it's great. Um, looking forward to it. Not spending... Well, it's not so bad with antimatter, but still not spending huge amounts of fuel just to take off from the planet like this. It also kind of unifies... Um, like, our base on Nalvis and our orbital base, so we don't need, like, uh, to move low throughput items between the mall in orbit and here is a bit of a nuisance. Like, really expensive stuff like modules, for example. Um, also, it was a fun challenge, but really not very cost-effective, let's say. Um, I'm surprised there's nothing going on here right now. Uh, when we didn't have antimatter and we wanted copper from this planet, uh, 8,845 radius, uh, what I did was an orbital base that receives, um, ingots, explosives, and, uh, delivery cannon capsules in vast quantities, just so that we can send that down here. Uh, just so that we can make delivery cannon capsules here. So that we can send the copper core fragments uh, back upstairs. Why is it not working right now? Let's check on our ships. This one is moving? I think it's working, it's just slow. It's a lot slower than we're used to um, with antimatter now. Sange 2 is moving, Sange 3 is moving, 4 is dropping off. No, it's waiting for more ingots and stuff. We've got the ingots. We, we need 12 more explosives or so. We need plate. Wait, no, we don't need plate. Uh, and it's it has unloaded the copper core fragments. All right, cool. Well, that is a lot. Wait. Okay, it's fine. For a second there, I thought maybe I didn't tell LTN that there's copper core fragments here, but I'm sure I would have noticed that sooner. 
Yeah, we're totally saturated in copper. Feels good. Um, but yeah. Had to spend crazy amounts of explosives and iridium in order to get copper off of this planet. Uh, obviously, making a space elevator would be trivially easy compared to that. Um, and we lose a bit of the challenge. But there isn't really a great solution to this right now. At least not before you get antimatter engines, and that deletes that challenge anyway. Trying to wrap my head around your Omni smelters and how they work. Which one do you prefer? There's one called V2.0 and one called Mark II. Uh, usually Mark II, I guess. So the smelters. Um, first of all, we need the crafting combinator mod because we have to set recipes on these things. Um, the crafting combinator mod receives a signal uh, and then just sets the recipe to that signal. The first thing we do here is basically we have a memory cell that defaults to holding on to one of each recipe. Um, we've got a constant combinator with one of each here and then we've got if everything equals one output everything one. That goes to a memory cell that connects back to this thing. Uh, and the memory cell says each greater than zero output one each. So until this memory cell is empty, or rather it has no positive signals, it's going to hold on to, for example, uh, beryl ingots and iridium ingots, uh, what we're trying to smelt here right now. There's an arbitrary order of signals that, uh, just like with the anything signal, there's an arbitrary order of signals where um, Crafting Combinator will pick one first. And basically, so we start with all of these recipes that we're trying to do. And then when we give this a negative signal for any given recipe, um, we remove that recipe that we're trying to give these smelters from the list. When it gets back to empty, um, we start again. And apart from a timer that I've jammed into the middle of this, um, all of this over here is actually pretty simple. We're just saying things like, if we've got too much glass, stop trying to do recipe glass. If we've got too much glass, stop trying to do glass. Um, if we've got no iron plate, stop trying to make steel. Um, just multiply that by negative one and it gets pulsed into this thing. Uh, and we've got a timer in the middle of it because I want this thing to switch recipes not constantly. Um, that way we don't lose the productivity bonus very much. Um, and crafting combinator, when it comes to making omni smelters, uh, with vanilla one of the big challenges is putting a precise amount of, for example, iron plate or stone into the furnace so that it doesn't get jammed. Um, but with Crafting Combinator, that's not an issue at all. Uh, whenever it switches recipe, it'll just throw everything that was in here uh, into the purple chest. Um, so it makes that part very, very easy. But yeah, I quite like this, uh, this design. Start with try to smelt everything, and then just do that until some condition is met where we're no longer trying to do this or that recipe. Or just remove recipes as they become, like, not feasible. I used to belt ones at the moment. Yeah, I was using belts before. 
I don't think I have any examples left, actually. Oh, wait, we do. Here's a couple of the old ones. This was actually the second iteration of using belts with the Omni Smelters. Um, there's only... Uh, if, uh, there's only the basics um, that we do here, like um, iron, copper, steel, stone, and glass. Uh, and that was difficult enough to have like a decent throughput using belts and decent density at the same time. It's really not very good density by comparison. This is 36 um, furnaces in a block versus 144 with bots. It really can't compare. Um, and as far as the throughput goes as well, if this thing were to try to make glass all the time, uh, it's actually too slow with the belts. Um, so we have sand coming in all the time, and while we're smelting other things, we're filling this up with sand so that we'll be able to go a few minutes uh, when we swap recipes. Um, and the way we do that is pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, here we've got a set filters blacklist reading from the chest that it's inserting into. And on the constant combinator that's also connected to it, we've just got a negative amount so that instead of putting in a little tiny bit of sand, like one handful, and then stopping, uh, it's going to put in up to an extra 2400 with an offset for like one handful there. Because when you set requests, uh, if it's zero or negative, the signal doesn't count. So it makes it very easy to do things like that. Um, so what do we have here? We've got just a little bit of all of these types of data. And of course we are... what? Hmm. Okay, just got interesting. I thought we would only have stopped here because we ran out of plate. But apparently, uh, do we just need more Arcospheres to be able to keep this balanced, or can we improve this? The trouble is, with these four machines, we've got uh, one, two, three Arcosphere pi out of circulation here. And unless I'm going to use a counting machine, like just for every single type of arcosphere at every single input, uh, we're going to have a few... Like here we've got another three arcosphere lambda that's not in circulation. Unless I'm going to set requests and use a counting machine and like... Hmm. If I set requests, I can't read the chest. I could set requests, and then as soon as this thing picks up Arcosphere Lambda, uh, we read hand contents pulse, multiply that by negative one. We have a memory cell here to set the requests. That way, instead of three Arcosphere Lambdas in this spot, we could reduce it to one. But honestly, I think just getting more Arcospheres um, would be the way to go anyway. Thanks, made it clearer, no worries. Um, I, I imagine we're a while away from getting more Arcosphere collectors. We've actually got 12. That's not that bad. That's almost as many as we've already used, but... We are getting diminishing returns. Okay. So I think the main thing to do right now, actually, is just... 
Spam Vitamelange. Move that bottleneck. Also, I think I need to update this blueprint. Um, because I'm pretty sure... Yep, it's missing that piece of wire. Select new contents. And go. Um, do we have our construction ships ready to launch? We could use more scaffolding. That one's actually a lot more full as far as scaffolding goes. I think I'll send number two out to Electra. So we can continue building this out. What? Oh, right. If you're on the same surface, it doesn't jump to the ship. Electra. Orbit. And... That reminds me. Calidus Orbit. I was almost about to send our second construction ship out here, but... This thing's already here. Oh. So we should have... What have we got? Five gigawatts? Um, we don't need a whole lot. Just need to add a little bit of heat to Well actually did I I have heated this one up already. Um, we just need to add a beam transmitter to send heat here. Or maybe to Pentium instead or as well. Um, so I think I want to add like 6 gigawatts. We've almost got there already. Yeah, this will be enough. Do we have more scaffolding though? Quite a lot. I think as soon as we're done building this, I'll, I'll build the energy beaming up here and we'll bring this back down and keep building out our solar panels. We've run out of antimatter engines, apparently. Spaceship antimatter engine, 54. That is not a small number. That's actually a pretty large number. Well, we need to wait for this thing to warm up anyway. I was about to travel somewhere personally, apparently. Um, I'm kind of blanking on where that was. I do want to set up an outpost. Oh, we need to cook the bugs on this planet first as well. Four point two K radius, not many biters. It shouldn't take too long to clear. Um, but before we do we need like quite a bit of energy to point at it. I would start designing remotely what we're gonna put on earring. But the biters are going to start expanding if I leave that surface available. Won't stay clear with the meteors though. Won't stay clear. Uh, Midden, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh yeah, the biter meteors. Yeah, we are going to need meteor defense there anyway. Um, but the energy glaives are going to clear out any... But I might need, it might need manual intervention if it goes from zero to something. 
Um, but the energy glaive is going to clear out any new biters that get added to it very quickly. I love the thought of that. Just sear the bugs from space, indeed. Sel Selonianth? Selonianth? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how about our delivery of media defense ammo, speaking of which? Our two quartermaster ships are very slowly crawling towards it still. Going to have to fire up my old play for the elevators when they arrive? Absolutely. Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I appear to have forgotten I have a request for a number of spider drone remotes. Um, whoops. No, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, Alright, let's do this again. Settings, interface, always keep sorted. I want the remote to be here. I was trying to um, deprogram it right there. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sitting in an. I'm not sitting in a robot network right now. That's why the bots haven't taken this away yet. Be gone, extra remotes. Two fifty hours world record, <laughs> indeed. It would actually. I've seen the prep work that some speedrunners put in, uh, and the amount of, if it were to get competitive, which it wouldn't, but the amount of prep work that would go into trying to speedrun space exploration, my goodness. But even to do just a quote-unquote casual speedrun of this, like, to try to do any speedrun of this, it would take a lot. Okay, I guess we'll send our construction spiders back up here for now. Um, we're waiting on more Arcosphere collectors. And everything always is waiting on Naquium, which is waiting on Vidamelange. Uh, I don't suppose we're bottlenecked some other way just yet. We might need another block to process Vitamelange core fragments already. Um, I kind of hope so. Since we've got such high volumes, um, let's look for six train loads. Ninety-six thousand. And six trains at once on each side. And then, construction spiders. Whoa, where are you? I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, 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 we need to connect this. Oh, wait, not like that. Oh, I can't see where I'm trying to place it. That is all in the same robot network. Yeah, that's actually a really good fit. Okay. And if I had a chance to update the station... Well, I didn't have a chance to update the station name. But it's definitely gone for a while. Let's put another block to process Vitamelange core fragments here. We're not going to need the... Uh, we're not going to need the signal transmitter anymore. I'll just double check, but... I'm pretty sure we're not doing any delivery cannons uh, for Vitamelange core fragments at this point. 
we've got only two planets, I believe, with Vitamelange in our solar system. And I don't think we're mining Vitamelange regularly. Yeah, so we can get rid of that now. Uh, this one. And we don't really need the chests. It was a nice design, though. I mean, we're still using it for other resources. But I quite like... I quite like having the trains bring in core fragments that the ships bring in, while also having the delivery cannons just bring stuff directly here. Those little lurches are just because spiders are placing uh, signals. It'll clear up in a minute. And we don't need this. I should have deleted it or copy paste. It's fine. And same thing on the other side. Don't kill the signal. Don't need those uh, combinators. Wait, what? Uh, did I? Did I remove that stuff from the wrong block? Uh oh. This is erudite. Okay, okay, do not deconstruct that. Good thing we didn't have any bots in range. We almost did. He did the wrong core, yes. Luckily we caught it. And luckily there weren't bots in range to... Uh, maliciously comply with my egregious mistake. Alright, so this is Vitamelange Core Fragments. This is the one that we want to get rid of. With the chests. Probably should have been a tip that we didn't have constant throughput of Vitamelange Core Fragments here. Of which we are totally saturated at the moment. Um, we need more prod modules. So, I'm less concerned about that than losing out on throughput at the moment, since core fragments are infinite. Do we have prods here? Should I deliver some? I've got a hundred and... Oh, I've got like 239. I'll put those in the module box, the smallest ship we have. Um, but I'll wait until the spiders get back to the mall. Because... I have a feeling those modules are going to be taken away from the mall downstairs very, very quickly. El Pancho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, String Weasel, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Why do you have so many interstellar ships? Uh, for throughput. Also because I spent a lot of time making lots of ion ships. Uh which we could now replace with hardly any antimatter ships. I don't know what the absolute minimum time would be, but I guess it would be shockingly low. Uh, where speedrunners are involved, it would definitely be shockingly low. 
let's turn off our logistics. So this thing is looking for, I think, 250? No, 500. I don't even need to... wait to put that stuff in there. We do have 95 prods here. Okay. Why are we still not seeing antimatter stuff and shield projectors? Shield projectors are not expensive. Uh, we've got 52 of them right here, actually. We don't even have to wait for them to be constructed. In fact, there's only one recipe that's scheduled right here. Point defense ammo. So I'm not sure what's going on with our... I think it's just way too many things scheduled to be delivered by short trains at this one station. It was fine for a long time, but maybe I need to come up with something higher throughput to put stuff into the short train from the logistic network. Speedrunners are the kind of people who find out tricks like if you jump into this wall at exactly this angle and on this frame of this animation, hit X, you slip through the wall and save three minutes. Yes. Uh, my favorite uh, little comic thing. Well, I mean, there's only one I can think of, but my favorite little piece of media, if you like, going on about speedrunners. Uh, there's this... It's basically Portal. Um, the first, like, seven seconds or something uh, done by a speedrunner reenacted with uh, GLaDOS saying, wait, no, what are you doing? Stop that. As someone glitches through the ceiling with the radio that you start with uh, in the very first room. Chen, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. Thank you. Appreciate that very much. There's that... There's the Zelda Little... Animateds? I'll have to check that out. Let me just add that to my tab over here. Something about Zelda animated speedrun. Alright, cool. I'll check that out later. That is a lot of dead bots. Oof. Alright. Um, are our construction spiders back home? Pretty much. Let's send this thing... Down to the mall. It showcases very well how absolutely ludic ludicrous speed one speed running would be in universe. Oh yeah. I wonder if um. Hmm. I don't think that could be. I'd I'd love to be proved wrong. Um, I don't think that could be fertile ground for like a comedy series. Um, you know, like a like a good production value kind of thing. Um, but I'd love to be proven wrong about that. Just because there wouldn't be that much material, I'd imagine. Okay. Um. I might just go and pick up these antimatter things. Because well, we're only at 3000 degrees. This thing's not taking as long as I thought. I think I'm just being a bit impatient here. Um 
Um, but that said, let's go pick up some shield projectors and antimatter thingies. And I'll take that over here directly so that this will be ready to go as soon as possible. Um, I'm going to send this at our new Vitamelange planet when we get that sorted out. Also, um, I kind of missed it, but I wanted to see if one ship was keeping up with Penium here. We're going to we're gonna need to wait for another lap to see if the storage here fills up and the, the miners actually stop. Or I guess... Um, I can probably just look at four fragment vitamelange production uh, over the last hour. There was a dip. There was a big dip. I think this right here is what we get from Rose. All right, so first step is... I don't think this was because of the little mistake I made earlier. Yeah, I think we need a second ship. So there's always one here that's being filled up. That's what this one's going to be. Penium 2. It showcases very well how absolutely ludicrous speedrunning would be. Oh, I read that already. Dope. Okay, um, I'm surprised we don't have more to do with Arcospheres at this point. So we've got the next four types of data card. They're going to take a very long time uh, if we're waiting on like 8,000 of them. I think I might do a build that's just going to be... Short trains only. Oh, I already set up this with long trains. It's not too late to change it. Um, I could do a build that's just short trains only for making tier 3 catalogs. Or, come to think of it, all we need... Yeah, we don't even need to put that in the rail network. Uh, we could just do... A supercomputer here. We've got our 273 degree, negative 273 degree thermofluid. We just need to deliver cryonite rods as well. We can add that to our short train delivery here. Cryonite rods, where are we even getting those from? Here we go. That is set up to take short trains. Um, I guess we're sending the spiders back here. Speaking of which, let's get to deconstructing. And I guess I'll get them close to the big containers. Oh, there's a few over here. It's fine. So we're going to be adding a request for cryonite. Um, I don't think we have like a passive provider chest here, uh, a storage chest or anything. So I'll wait until the spiders get there. And we need a computer. Uh, may as well put it here, I guess. Why not equidistant?
So we're just going to have a request a chest here for all of those data cards. They don't go anywhere else, do they? Let's see. Space X data. Let's just search space. Space dilation data. Right click. Goes into catalog only. Uh, folding data only goes into catalog. Injection data only goes into catalog. And warping data only goes into catalog. Cool. So there's actually zero reason to take those outside of this rail block. The videos are something about Zelda. Yeah, I think I found it. Something about Zelda Breath of the Wild animated speedrun. I'll check that out later. Alright, we've got Catalog 3. And... We did very optimistically have a long train... Uh, input station for Catalog 3 here. That and Tesseracts, which we still haven't made. Alright, so request a chest. Um, I might put that up here just for the look of it. And there's literally nowhere else these data cards are going to be going. I don't mean just go for a stack. We've got the fluid. Uh, we need to request cryonite rods. Um, 4.8k is what will fit in... the chest, and don't forget to connect it so that LTN knows what's in there. Um, could give it some speed modules as well, but I'm sure we'll be bottlenecked on the actual resources till the end of time. Do we have construction bots in here? No, it's only logistic. Uh, if I just turn these into purple chests, then they won't go through the spiders. And we'll keep our precious data where it belongs. Get rid of that. Cryonite is on its way. And... Oh, I think I forgot I was going to deliver this stuff personally. We've got everything except the shield protectors now. Actually, I forgot to turn on my personal logistics. Whoops. Okay, well, that would probably have been ready by the time we had a good temperature on this anyway. Calidus? We've finished with these solar panels. Um, let's launch you and move you up here. Actually, I'll get it to... I'll get the construction ship to finish down here first. The outposter. Right about... Here, actually.
think uh, um, I'll give it lots of orders just so I don't have to remember for a while again. Omni smelter question. Does it auto switch to vulcanite recipe if I feed the system with it? Yes. Um, so if I recall correctly, with the arbitrary order of signals, um, it just happens to favor doing vulcanite recipes first. So we didn't have to add any extra logic to deal with that. Um, just like if you use Crafting Combinator to try and make Stone Furnace, Steel Furnace, and Electric Furnace, uh, it's going to go for Stone Furnace first. Um, and we've got a bunch of sick, uh, conditions over here. If there's no Vulcanite, don't try to do the Vulcanite recipe, and so on. But yeah, the arbitrary order of signals... Um, I'm pretty sure Crafting Combinator works... Uh, no, that might be wrong, actually. Uh, but it might work just like when you say... Uh, anything greater than zero output anything. Uh, this will pick one signal from the list. And it's the... I think it's always the first signal that appears on that list if you mouse over it. Um, so here it's picking antimatter engines, here it's picking, um, energy beam receivers, uh, and quantum processes, and so on. Um, I'm pretty sure if you feed a bunch of signals to a crafting combinator, it takes the first one of those in the same way. And it just so happens that the, uh... It just so happens that, let's see, recipe glass, actually let's look at iron plate, recipe iron plate, I can't look at like the signal ID for this, item ID, but we can't look at an ID for the signal. Yeah, I don't know exactly what you need to look at to confirm, without experimentation, uh, what comes first in the ordering of things, but it happens to work out in our favor with the Vulcanite recipes. Is the goal for your playthrough one UPS? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we need to check on various things and make sure they're still working. This is fine. How full are we? 284k. Um, our construction ship... ...is only one minute out from its target. Fantastic. Did we get the ammo yet? No. Um, those slow ammo delivery ships are still on their way when our construction ship has left and come back after I forgot about it for quite a while. Big, big difference between iron and antimatter. Oh yeah, we're still deconstructing this stuff. This is not empty, is it? Not even a little bit. I'm sure we can fit the pipes. This is empty. This has 23,000. Some of the spiders are still pretty empty. Hey, repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. I was going to go somewhere directly. I think it was just to deliver these um, shield projectors. But was there something else as well? 
I did say I need to go... Oh yeah, that's right. Um, we're bottlenecked... That's the wrong planet. We're bottlenecked by belt just a little bit here. Actually, 20 core fragments per second. That is nothing to scoff at. There's going to be slightly more than that. Um, once that shield thing disappears. How close are we to filling up? I can get the bots to... Swap that out for a second. There we go. Uh, 204 core fragments per second. We need to place belt. What the... Oh, I didn't activate my rover pod. Alright, cool. Um, that's not a whole lot of belt. I think I'll take the construction ship just to make sure we've got enough stuff. Also, I don't need to be carrying this right now. Heat. Fantastic. Alright, let's go to Penium. And we'll upgrade the throughput there a little bit. Uh, maybe I should... How much power do we have? We've got 12 gigawatts. I think I'll put this on hold for a little bit. Um, and we're going to go up here and build this pair of energy beam transmitters, uh, emitters. We've got more than enough power. And after that's done, I'll put it back onto this long job. Alright, so this is going to be aimed at Penium. Keep this uh, nice and toasty. And then we're going to do the same thing, uh, but point it at the drop-off station. Lunch has arrived. Nice. Oh, that looks good. Making me hungry. Do we not have scaffolding? Oh, wait, the bots are just taking their sweet time recharging. Hmm. What if I try... swapping this out? And then I can delete this for a second. And then hopefully half the bots will go to the supercharger. But I think I need to make sure there's at least one robo-port. This doesn't seem to be working. I'll just wait for it. It's fine. Wait, what did I just press there? Huh. I never even noticed this button. Never used it before. Alright, two minutes to Penium. Uh, Electra should have a ship there. Fantastic. We are going to anchor... Probably... About here. Actually, let's put a supercharger here before things get out of hand. We do have one, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Alright, that should prevent the bot, char uh, bot charging apocalypse this time.
I'll give that some time. How's our Vita Melange looking, I wonder? Oh, we've got more than a train load here. That's a pretty good sign. Of Vita Melange extract, it looks like it's not not indicative of how things are going, actually. But we're getting there. How's our throughput of Naquium plate? It's still pretty hit and miss. Too soon to say. But it is going full speed at the moment. Even though we just ran out of Vitalic Acid, actually. Never mind. Uh, let's get our deconstruction spiders to finally do their thing here. I think I must have hit a signal. Yep, there it is. And over here. Out with the old stations. Think that's everything. That's a lot of bots. Okay. Calidus orbit. Go. What are these bots doing? They seem confused. Uh, so this one's going to be aimed at Malvis, actually. And right about here. And that'll keep our ships warm. 33 seconds till we get to Penium. 318k Bitcore fragments have been loaded. Kind of crazy how fast we're going through them. Let's see, consumption over the last hour is 4.4k per minute. We're making 11k per minute. That doesn't seem quite right. Oh, did we finish making that block? We need some more prod modules. Also, something is busted here. Let's get our spiders. They should have prod modules now. Fantastic. Down to the new Vitamelange core fragment processing block. Gotta watch out for that. It wouldn't have mattered here, but if we're checking signals, that would have been a problem. The crafting combinator recipes signals. Alright, so everything is saturated. Vita Melange is going to the right place. We've got just... oh, I see the problem. We got random bits of stone on the belt from, like, deconstructing rocks. This happens a lot when we make uh, mining outposts. Um, 
But yeah, I'm pretty sure everything is actually built correctly here. Alright, spiders are going to take a minute to get there. I need to wait till they get there and then mark these two chests for deconstruction. And, and then I can just do undo so that I'll put them back. That's unfortunate. I think, uh... Let's go. Time to improve these belts a bit. I hate getting... I hate picking up stuff that I don't want to from the belts. So I do that first. We should probably connect these robot networks. And then... I guess I can copy-paste flip this, right? That should work pretty well. Yeah, that's good. Is this ship going to leave in a second? 331k. I could send it early so that I don't have to deal with the shields. If I toggle them on and off, the ship might leave while the shield is toggled off. I think I'll just get it to go home early. We'll get a slightly worse ratio of... Oh! <gasps> oh no. Um... That's not... That's not what I had in mind. It took me with it. Okay. I'm not gonna have the ship land again because it's gonna cost a ton of fuel. We're going to have our construction ship chase it. And we're going to aim this thing at a construction ship. Now I can board my ship. Can't turn around fast enough. And back to Pennium. And Pennium 1. Can go back to Nalvis. How much fuel does it have? Yeah, a little bit less than half. Alright, let's try that again. And this time, uh, I guess I don't have it marked on the ground where our ship goes. But we can easily, we can easily check that with this blueprint. Where is it? Yeah, as long as I don't go within those, outside of these four blocks on either side, we'll be fine. In fact, can I just... I might have to move this a bit. We should be able to keep it nice and symmetrical this way. It, 
it would make the loading take slightly longer than it needs to, but I don't think uh, we're going to bottleneck on loading the ship anyway. These wires, though. Let's make sure they're all connected. Looks good. And our ship goes uh, right about here. That should be fine. Um, also, we just doubled the capacity of these, so let's change that to 600k. Right one is off by one, too low. Right one is off by one. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Um. I could do a lot of picker dollies inputs. And then we wouldn't have to mess with the wiring. really no need to move these chests, but symmetry though. Nice. Now why are these ones not moving? Probably because I forgot to add these uh, undergrounds. There should already be a bot on their way, yep. So this will actually give us uh, 204 core fragments per second. And I'm pretty sure we could afford more. Maybe we should expand that even more before adding... Uh, before making another outpost. On the other hand, 32 drills, we are getting pretty deep into diminishing returns here. I don't think it's really worth the time. Okay. Let's head back. Or somewhere. Do we have solar panels and uh, scaffolding here? Yeah, why don't we go to Calidus? And we'll help out with adding some solar panels. No underground on the right one too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There wouldn't happen to be an accidental spare underground here, would there? I don't think there is. Penium. Good thing this had... Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. That's actually pretty low on the fuel. Um, let's go to Nalva's orbit first. And get some antimatter fuel. Is there really no... Is there no way to finagle this without going back? I don't think there is. If we some if we like missed deconstructing an underground here or here or here or here, um, that would have solved the problem. This is going to be the most expensive single piece of express underground belt 
of all time. It's going to cost tens of thousands of antimatter stream. Well, it happens. And just those drills existing and sitting idle is slowing down all of the others because of how the diminishing returns work. Uh, that's unfortunate. At least we didn't get stuck on the planet. That would have been extra embarrassing. Right, missing underground belt? Yeah, I noticed. I can't go back there right now, otherwise we'll get stuck with no fuel. Is T-Hacks too fast or do we type too slow? <laughs> I think it's a bit of both and the delay and uh, not checking chat every millisecond that I'm doing something. Oh. Oh. Remember that block I marked for deconstruction by the deconstruction spider gang? Yeah. Our construction bots just, uh, spiders just walked through that one. And now they've got a bot cloud of glass and iron following them. Hopefully they'll still be able to fix this. And undo. That should do it. Alright, back to the mall with you. Uh, don't walk through the spaceships, please. Bad things happen when we walk through the space. Whoa, 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 whoa. Another bit of random stone that happened to be on the belt. And it just had to be on, like, this part of the belt as well, because we've got filters um, that get stone over here. Okay. I think it works now. I think it works now. So that should push our Vitamelange throughput limit up to almost 360. Uh, about 350. We've got three blocks here that can consume a grand total of 1. Point, oh, 470. That's still a lot. Okay, so given that we know these ratios are okay, um, we definitely need more Vitamelange core fragment processing. Um, but I think the 180, the 360 that we're capable of now is a lot more than we can produce for the moment. Um, so we need another outpost to shift the bottleneck next. Good to know. I'm surprised I had that much more Vitamelange processing here than we're actually capable of working with. Uh, it might have had something to do with the excess Vitamelange we ended up with earlier. What's this thing looking for? Prod modules. Hmm, I'm going to remove the requirement for modules for now. Okay, back at Calidus. Uh, this thing should still have... Why does it only have half a tank of ion stream? Well, whatever. We'll send it down here.
worst case, it'll have to crawl back to Nova's orbit. Bots should move again now, I hope. They're looking a bit confused. Uh, do we not have Ion Stream over here? We do. I'm surprised how empty that was. Okay. If I don't want to pay antimatter stream, I could take the oldest shuttle we've got back here. Then again, I don't know if it can even take off from this behemoth. Electra? Did we finish building this? Yes, we did. Fantastic. Wait, wrong one. So how much power is this going to be? 12.1 megawatts times 500 and something. About 6 gigawatts. I want more before we get started. With the glaives, that is. Alright, so what's our ETA to Nervous? Nine seconds. Seems reasonable. Um, and what else are we doing? Not a whole lot. Vita Melange Go Burr. Fantastic. Oh, and I forgot to... I did briefly remember this earlier as well, but I was busy doing something else. Um, push that train limit back up again so that we can get these items back in circulation. For the trash train. That is some pretty fast loading. I guess it is literally the fastest loading that we can get. Um, 12 maximum stack size inserters, direct inserting into each cargo wagon. Um, alright, we've arrived. Imagine if we had a space elevator at Pentium. <laughs> We could have just stepped back downstairs like it was nothing to put that uh, underground back in place. Good to see this is working. We got five missing here, but that's sort of by design. Got a little bit of bot support here. Oh! That was a big one. Yeah, I think we found out what caused our shields to get down to yellow health earlier. And this was only in asteroid density 100. Uh, and we're going at a speed of 134. I wonder if... I wonder if the game throws heavier asteroids at you if you have a larger ship. In fact, I don't wonder that. I think it's almost guaranteed. I don't think I've even seen this before. And it's exactly the same ship that we had before, but with more container stress. 
it's probably so that like it, it doesn't make sense or anything except from a perspective of game balance um we added container stress we our ship got slower but proportionally we're better off with throughput uh and a slower ship is easier to defend unless they arbitrarily make it so that we have to shoot down bigger asteroids good thing we have these shields They recharge very, very quickly if they get low. Um, it seems the lower they get, uh, the exponentially faster they recharge. I've seen the graph of energy. I see those curves there. The higher they spike, um, the steeper the, steeper the um, consumption at first. Um, I'm pretty sure we just pay, it looks like we just pay per hit point, but the lower the shield gets, the faster it recharges. That is a big one. So, yeah, glad we have shields. It would be pretty hard to shoot those down with lasers. It ha happened after antimatter for me. Have they talked about the way they will implement space elevators? Like, will you have to haul an asteroid in, uh, into orbit to function as an anchor? Uh, that would be cool, but I doubt it. Just thinking about what is likely possible with a Factorio mod, I, I wouldn't expect to see that. Sheep say meh. Good to see you again, by the way. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If I didn't already say so. Next update is called Space Elevator. Indeed. El Waiter. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. You shouldn't need an asteroid for an anchor. Yeah, no. I don't think so. With the Rampart mod, you would get silly large lasers. Yeah... Having certain modded defenses would definitely make things interesting. It would be a bit masochistic in terms of how much longer it would take. I Actually, I have a thought. What if we did Rampant... Oh, wait. Rampart? I was thinking of Rampant. Or is that not one of the Biter difficulty mods anymore? I might be getting the names confused. There was Misanthrope, which is defunct. Uh, I think it's Rampant. That's the last one I used for... Um, for, like, a Bider difficulty playthrough. It makes all kinds of... Uh, there's Nuclear Biders, among other things. There's all kinds of different types. Hey, Sheep Seamith and chat. Um, but yeah, I was also thinking of trying, like, rocket turrets, for example. Those look cool. Rampart is the Bider difficulty mod, but those are two parts. Yeah, I was thinking Rampant might be fun, but not on Nalvis, because that would just make the start excruciatingly slow, as if it wasn't by default already. So, like... Rampant, but zero biters on Nalvis? Because changing the settings doesn't affect what you get on other planets. But then... I don't know. Those lasers consuming insane amounts of energy as well? Yeah, but this thing produces insane amounts of energy. Oh, you mean the modded ones, right? Well, this thing does produce a gigawatt um, if you don't block it in any way. And that's not counting the three, well, two and a half, really, condenser turbines um, that you need to clear out the 500 degree steam that comes out. Alright, I think we've stared at this long enough to confirm that it's probably, probably not going to crash into a giant asteroid. 
Um, what have we got here? Scaffolding. A lot of scaffolding. Let's go to Calidus. Oh, wait. Um, let's go to Penium first. And place that one underground belt that we forgot. Rip. Also... This thing is well and truly ready to launch. Okay. Um, that is a lot of core fragments. Love it. So I, I, I don't think we're getting close. Let's actually check. To keep these two going consistently, we need drumroll. Uh, 80 Vitalic Acid per second. Um, each block makes 92 per second, actually. Not counting what goes into the scrubbers, but, um, the demand for scrubbers has been really, really low. So we actually only need one block, in theory. 140... Let's just round it up. 140 Vitamelange extract per second. Uh, this block can do... 95. One and a half of these blocks. It's actually sort of two blocks in one here, with the way the train stations have been laid out. Uh, this is actually very close to what we're looking at. Alright, so 284. We need 270, 280 Vitam lunch per second to keep up with Naquatite going at full speed. And that's even just with these two blocks, which wasn't that fast for Naquatite, actually, when we had the reserves of Vitalic Acid. Uh, so 270... Um is significantly less than double this. We need about 1.5 of these blocks. Um, I think. Well, we need about the same... Yeah, it, it almost is one to one. Uh, about 270 core fragments per second, give or take. So we make another outpost like this, we're going to be, we're going to have way more than enough um, bit of melange, I think. And that's going to be what happens at Earring, once we can actually sort that out. Um, can we get some range up here? Alright, but I think that is just about going to do it for today. Since there's some swarm intelligence that wants them to keep together, and then they're moving very slow. Oh, before they see something to attack, the biters do that, yeah. Great stream, thank you. Thanks for hanging out, Daniel. Uh, who should we raid today? Maybe someone playing SE if we can. Speaking of speedruns, there's Zimultus. Uh, we got... I don't see any SE. So what should we go for? It's been a minute since we raided Mucky, I think. It's also been a minute since we raided Sushi. Going 
go for the smaller one today. All right, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out, Chucky. And thank you very much for the sub. Uh, check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions or anything, by all means, don't hesitate. And uh, stay safe. See you, Veldak. See you, Sheep. And uh, Lids, good job. Take care. Night Dancer. Bye bye. All right, let's head on over, shall we? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh. I ran a source hack, but it's here again. Oh no. Hey, Actually, my shoutouts work today. Oh, that's good, all right. Yeah, they work.